the undefeated Evangel Christian Eagles and the undefeated St. James Wildcats. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Gerald Duhon along with Renee Nato, and, well, we've done it. Number one and number two in the state will meet here in the Dome. They'll decide who the state champion is in AAA. And two teams with identical records, 14-0, and identical firepower. Both teams have the potential to score from anywhere in this field. Evangel with 47 points per game. St. James, 37 points per outing. It'll be a lot of firepower out here this evening. Two very different offenses, and when you look at Evangel, you do think firepower. You think of a lot of firepower, a lot of touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns through the air, and it starts with their quarterback, Philip Dees. He's already committed to North Carolina, and the young man has broken all kind of passing records. Philip Dees with 135 career touchdowns, a national record, and he is committed to North Carolina, and he'll be throwing a lot to number 88, and that's Abram Booty, who is a career uh, record holder in the nation with 80, with uh, 81 touchdown grabs. You hear that connection quite a bit this evening with B. Evangel. Abram Booty making his first transition here in the Superdome as a freshman, playing with his brother, Josh Booty. Now he goes out as a senior, playing with Philip Dees. Head coach of the Evangel Eagles, well, that's Dennis Dunn. I had a chance to catch up with Dennis Dunn, and we chatted a little bit about the contest, we chatted a little bit about the matchup, and we also talked a little bit about his loss to Cecilia in last year's playoffs that helped propel his team this year into the state finals. We were extremely disappointed. You know, our kids were hurt. We had a lot of young kids, and uh, I think they made their mind up at that point that they weren't going to let that happen. I mean, they, their dream and their goal and their vision has been to go 15-0 to uh, play in the state championship. And, and that, you know, to go 15 and over the schedule we had was, was seemingly impossible, really. We opened up with the defending 5A champion, Neville. You know, nobody gave us a shot. Dennis Dunn, already a successful coach, Renee, two state championships under his belt. A man trying to pick up state championship number one is Rick Gailey and the St. James Wildcats. And you probably don't find anyone better that runs the wing tee than St. James does. Very crisply run offense. Delaware wing tee, and Kerry Lovett is a trigger man for that offense. And Coach Rick Gailey feels like that's the best quarterback he can have, regardless of the talent in this state. There's some great quarterbacks. Kerry Lovett is the best quarterback for his style. Here's a good shot of the quarterback. His number eight will be plying his trade in the number one spot for this wing tee offense for St. James. And one of his big running backs is number 44. That's Trevor Charles in one of the halfback slots. They've got a couple of halfbacks, Renee, and a fullback. Charles, the left halfback and he is one of the cogs that make this engine run. He's a 4.55 speed guy. He's, he averages 9.0 yards per tote every time he touches the ball, so he's a potential weapon. A first down nearly every time he touches the ball, Trevor Charles. Well, it's a different scenario for the St. James Wildcats than two years ago. They took on the Amit Warriors here in the Dome. Coach Rick Gailey told me before the contest, everything's different about this game. It's, it, it is amazing how many things are different this year uh, than two years ago. Uh, we're the home team this year instead of the visiting team. Uh, we're in, uh, we're not in the two-lane locker room uh, that, that we were in two years ago. Uh, we're wearing the black jerseys instead of the gold jersey. So uh, there's many, many things. We had the, uh, the late workout uh, today uh, on Thursday, and we had the early workout before. We had the north end zone this year instead of the south end zone. So there's many things uh, that are different. Uh, and, and that's good, not so much from a superstition standpoint, but it kind of rounds everything out. We've been able now uh, in, in two of the last three years to kind of experience uh, the whole thing uh, that goes with uh, the Gatorade Super. It's the 14-0 St. James Wildcats and the 14-0 Evangel Eagles here from the Superdome for the AAA State Championship game. Renee and I will be back right around the corner with the exciting action here at the Dome.
presenting the 1996 Sports Care Coaches Award. At midfield representing Sports Care of Louisiana from Methodist Hospital, Mr. Chad Grosscup. First award, the 1996 Coaches Award to Evangel Christian Academy coach Dennis Dunn. The next award, 1996 Sports Care Coaches Award, goes to St. James head coach Rick Daly. The LHSA thanks Sports Care, the official health care network of the LHSA. Let's get ready to rumble! Triple-A state championship set to go. Evangel will be kicking off to St. James. The Eagles in their white uniforms with red and blue piping, red helmets with the E for Evangel on the helmets. As we are underway, Keller takes the ball from his own five, picks up a hit of speed, and he's wrapped up at the 18, a 14-yard return. Penalty flags on the play. Duncan Tell, Jeff Duncan Tell down the field for the stop. As you can see, St. James in their black uniforms with their gold lettering and the gold Wolverine stripes on their helmet, much like Michigan. Brand new uniforms this year for St. James. And they find these uniforms a Gatorade Superdome Classic. Clipping the call Personal against St. James, so the Wildcats will start deep in their own territory. Each team 14-0, each team ranked at or near the top of AAA the entire season. Evangel 1, St. James 2. We mentioned, Gerald, the potential both these teams have with Evangel 47 points, points per outing and, he, and St. James 37 points per game. And the Delaware wing tee of St. James produces 7.8 yards per play, so they're pretty potent. Here's the offense during the run back, it'll be first down. St. James offense taking the field. Let's check it. Your quarterback, big number eight, Kerry LaFay. Oliver Hooker, Rydell Harry, Albert Myler, Alfred Grant, and Avery Love, your offensive lineman for the Wildcats. There's Kerry LaFay, the quarterback. Alex Keller, Trevor Charles, the two halfbacks in this wing tee. Jansen Napoleon, the split end. Terrence Landry and Derek Elsey round out the skill positions. LeVay on first down, wants to pass, and does, and it's complete to Jance Napoleon. Napoleon grinds out 12, and it'll be a first down for St. James as we check the Christian, the Evangel Christian defenders. Brian Dawson along with Cole Pittman, Tyler Satterwaite along with Kurt Wollman anchor the front line. Justin Coggins, Redula Wilson, Marco Colley, and Matt Powell. The linebacking core, Jelena Lewis, Philip Geiger, and Brad Cobb are your secondary players. Keller and Dabney behind LeVay. Handoff slanting as Dabney. He'll puncture the 25 and get up to the 26-yard line before he's driven down by Cole Pittman, the left tackle. It'll be second down for the Wildcats. And this is two teams that just uh, really take it right at you. Of course, Evangel takes a an alternate route, they go via the air, and here St. James just runs right at you, and this is Dabney, the fullback, 4-8 speed, so he, if he gets outside, even though he's a fullback, powerful, low to the ground, 5-11, 216, he can break it. LeVay, the quarterback, keeping the ball, coming to the near sideline, he pitches it out to Charles, Charles up to the 35-yard line, driven out of bounds, it appears he's picked up, yet another St. James first down, and Renee, for those who may not know a lot about a wing tee offense, it's not strictly a ground game offense, St. James will put the ball in the air as well. Oh, yeah, they can. And, and the thing is, you need the right trigger, man. And you have it right here. Kerry Lovett, he makes that pitch. I'm going to show you something in a second. You saw him pitch with his left hand. There's so many things that need to be done with a, a good option quarterback. They need to make the right reads, make the right decisions. He's moving left, must pitch it with his left hand. That's his control hand. Uh, you need to keep your inside hand free because if you're going left, the defense can get to your inside hand a lot quicker. So it's not just pitching, reading, handing off. You need to make the right decision, and technique is so important to this quarterback. LeVay now coming to his right. He wants to pass and does, finding Napoleon again. Napoleon close to another first down marker for St. James. Pick up a close to 10 yards for Jance Napoleon. Philip Geiger comes up to make the stop. Napoleon, two catches, 22 yards. And Lovett 
really shows that multifaceted offense of the wing T hitting his receiver, uh, Jazz Napoleon. He's a converted tailback. Even though he's a wide receiver, knows what to do with the ball. He can break the tackles, and he stretches that defense with his 4-6 speed. They'll measure for the first down, and this is very close. And just short. So officially a pickup of nine, and it'll be second and one for the St. James offense. You know, we, we talked about how Rick Gailey likes this guy. He's he's completed 60 and a half percent of his passes for the season. It, they say he's the best quarterback in this area, no matter who. And he's facing a good one in uh, Philip D's this evening. But uh, really, Rick Gailey says, for my for my money, this guy's the best. And that's saying a lot because your quarterback in a wing T situation does not necessarily have to be the strong link of the team as Kerry is. Well, he's got 23 touchdown passes to his credit, which kind of uh, expounds a little bit on, this, on the statement you made a second ago that it's just not a running offense. 23 touchdown tosses. Second down and less than a yard for St. James. Napoleon split out wide on the left. Wing back on the left-hand side is Keller. Backs are split behind LeVay, who's receiving instructions from Rick Daly on the sideline. Good look at the senior quarterback as he settles in beneath Saint the center. And he'll hand off to the second back through Dabney. And it appears Dabney has picked up the first down. The chains will move yet again for St. James. Great crowd on hand, Renee. Of course, Evangel coming down from Shreveport into St. James. Folks much closer to the dome, but I think just about the entire town is here. There's a good look at the St. James people. Wow. I mean, yeah. it's it's packed. Yeah, the last one out, turn out the lights. That's what happened. That's the sign left on St. James when they left town to come down here to the Superdome. Dabney, the single back behind LeVay with a slot on the right. That's Charles. Slot on the left and in motion is Keller. LeVay wants the pass. Drop back, tossing the ball deep down the field, looking for Napoleon. Almost caught it. What a great effort by Jance Napoleon. Excellent coverage by Jelani Lewis as well. LeVette unable to unable to make the connection. It'll be second and ten. And the field just wasn't wide enough. Put a little air under the ball and let Jance Napoleon run underneath it. It was well covered. Good uh, good apply uh, by Jelani Lewis, but stops the action with 10-15 to go, and Lewis was really kind of tested. I want to mention two freshmen are starting for Evangel. Satterwhite. A number 47 and 21, Philip Geiger. Boy, that says an awful lot for these two athletes. Two freshmen starting for a 14 and 0 team, number one of the state. St. James employing the no huddle offense as it does quite often during the season. Well, that hands off on the counter to Keller. Big hole, still struggling forward. First down and more. He's broken the tackle. Down at the 31 man to beat us a foot race on the far sideline. And he's finally bumped out of bounds by Jelani Lewis all the way down to the three yard line. A 51 yard pickup for Alex Keller, the junior left halfback. He came into the game today with an even thousand yards on the season. And he's added a good 51 to that chunk here in the first quarter of this AAA state championship game. We're scoreless on St. James' initial possession. And he's a left halfback, 4-6 speed. He is the best all-around player. 8.8 .8 yards per tote every time he touches the ball. And boy, he's really, really flying with those feet down the sidelines. Lewis with that touchdown-saving tackle inside the five-yard line, but the Wildcats are banging on the door. Full house backfield, triple veer look. Double tight end. Hand off, struggling near the end zone. Touchdown for St. James. Martin Harry coming over from the defensive side gets the first points of this AAA game and St. James takes the opening kickoff and drives methodically down the field mixing the pass and the run for a 90-yard drive capped off by this Martin Harry three-yard run. Well, he's an all-state player on defense, but he shows he's got some, some firepower on offense as he carries in, breaks the plane, first scoring touchdown here in this big AAA battle. The extra point attempt by St. James is up and good. So our score with 10 minutes left in the first quarter, 7-0, Wildcats over the Eagles. Plum Bull, Renee, Martin Harry charging in. And this is the big run that <coughs> set it up. Alex Keller's 51-yard scamper. Look at him break those tackles. He wouldn't be denied. Broke a, broke, a, broke a tackle or two there. And boy, he's scampering. As he said, he's stretching out with that 4-6 speed. Jelani Lewis uh, has a little quicker speed, and he saved it. But... Uh, uh, here's Martin Harry 
pounding right here as he slams into Matt Powell. Just too strong for Powell, Drink, uh, drags him into the end zone. And uh, we were talking, St. James really with quick drives, they, they, they score so quickly with a two minute drive. No huddle offense, causes some problems. But uh, this is gonna be a high scoring affair, believe me. This, this is not gonna be a defensive struggle. Looking for a lot of fun, looking to see Philip Dees try on the field for the first time for Evangel as the Eagles await the kickoff. Deep kickoff that'll come down to around the six yard line. Jeff Duncan with the ball, and he's snowed under. Nowhere to go, a five yard return. Alex Keller, he runs the ball 51 yards down the field, and he also covers the kickoffs. And out comes Philip Dees, number 14. He's led on offense by his offensive line. Your left tackle, Don Courtney, David Moon, James McKeel, Michael Pirro, and Michael Joyner at the right tackle spot. There's Dees, number 14, the key. Jeff Duncan Tell and Terrence Brooks, the running backs. Robert Davis, who last year was in this dome in a 1A game, along with Abram Brody and Cole Pittman rounding out your skill positions. Dees dropping in about a nine-yard shotgun on first down. That's Booty in motion. All kinds of time. Dees Cox fires complete to Duncan Tell, just over the 30-yard line. Checking the Wildcat defense. Daniel Bourne is at the left end. Tenelius Fleming, the left tackle. Jeremy Harry and Terrence Landry rounding out the front four. Jermaine Harris, Harris son, Martin Harry, and Chad Parker, the linebackers. Melvin Barnes, Jared Howard, your cornerbacks. Tevis Smith and Andrew Dennis, the safeties. First and 10 for Evangel after that previous pickup. Double wide receivers left side, single wide receiver near side. Motion left to right is Duncan Tell. Play action pass, Dees wants to go long, wide open is Booty. He's got it at the 30, racing down the sidelines, inside the 20, down to the 16 yard line. Belden Barnes making the stop, and I'm chuckling, Renee, because you said it a moment ago, a high scoring game, look at it already. Well, every time Philip Dees completes a touchdown or Abram Booty catches one, they set a new national record. And boy, I tell you, Philip Dees can really air it out. You can see him dialing deep for Abram Booty, and Abram Booty with 4-4 speed, a 6-3, 180-pound product. Well, I'll tell you what, he's got the stretch and got the legs, and just that quick, Evangel is knocking on the door at the 15-yard line of St. James. Dees coming beneath center. If he takes a snap there, it'll be the first time this game, and he won't. He'll drop back to the shotgun formation, shifting his wide receivers. He's got four wide receivers on the field, no tight end, and a single running back. The running back is three yards in front of him. Dees changing the play at the line of scrimmage, which is quite difficult from eight yards deep in the shotgun. He retreat to his own 32. Lobbed the ball for the end zone, looking for Booty. What a catch! Touchdown, Abram Booty. He was covered like a blanket in the far corner. Jared Howard was all over him, but Booty somehow makes that grab. That's why Booty's a Division I prospect, and that's why Dees is playing for North Carolina last year with that kind of pass. Well, for you guys who, who remember Chris Collinsworth, you see a replica here, Chris Collinsworth. For you guys who, you gray beards, you may remember Gary Collins of the Cleveland Browns. Same kind of player, same kind of style. Tall, rangy receiver with good speed. 4-4 speed, a little faster than both those guys. But I tell you, Philip Dees puts it right on the mark. Abram Booty pulls it down, and just that quick, we're looking at a tied-up game with the extra point upcoming. Brad Cobb in to attempt the extra point. It is up and good. Well, St. James takes two minutes to move down the field. Evangel takes 42 seconds. So, at the end of the first quarter, uh, I should say with 9.18 remaining in the first quarter, we're not at seven. Evangel and St. James. This is the AAA state championship from the Superdome. 136 touchdown tosses. Abram Booty with 82 touchdown catches. Both career marks, both career highs on the national level. And Booty, uh, excuse me, Dees, needs 165 yard passing to break Josh Booty's record that he set when he was at, at Evangel, the national passing record. He's halfway there. He's already got 83 yards. Completions on that drive of 14, 53, and 16 yards. The 16 yard completion, capping a three play, 83 yard drive that took but 42 seconds off the clock. We are knotted at seven with 9.18 remaining in the first quarter. Cobb kicking the ball off and it'll go into the end zone for the touchback. So St. James will take it over, first and 10 from its own 20-yard line. 
And don't think that Evangel is just a passing offense because they got some some uh, foot soldiers to, to carry the ball for him. And, and uh, you'll see a lot of, lot more of this as we go on with uh, Lewis, Duncan, Tell, Brooks, guys. Brooks is the guy who you probably hear his name quite a bit on the ground. But here comes St. James again. And if you want to know, Gerald, where's the beef? Look up front and see the size across the front. 301, 276, 214, a mere pup. 235 and 265. It's a good look at the heat right there. Lorenzo's shot as Levesque sets his offense in motion. They get the ball. The Keller sweeping right, big hole. Keller will make it up to the 35-yard line. Big first down pickup for St. James. Brad Cobb, the free safety, who also handles kicking duties, finally making the stop. And you'll see Renee uh, out there in the field as we uh, look at the replay. Good cut by Keller right here as he'll cut it back right there. Yes, it was a good cut. Good blocking on the right side. Avery Love and Alfred Grant opening some big holes as uh, Keller's finding them and running through. And the juniors really chewing up some yardage. And we'll see St. James going with that no huddle offense that forces the defense into a, a vanilla look, if you will, and also to keep some of the personnel on the field. And it's a strategic thing for St. James more than anything else. It's not a hurry-up offense. It's a no-huddle offense. Charles on first down. Little, if any, running room after a nominal gain of about one yard. I'll bring up second down. Cole Pittman making the stop. Good look at Dennis Dunn. Young guy, Renee, but 35 years old. He's been with this Evangel program since they've gotten started. This is their, only their fourth season of playing varsity ball as the school was just founded in Shreveport. Dunn's won two state championships, disappointed last year by Cecilia, the eventual AAA state championship, and Evangel's first year in the 3A classification after winning two state championships in the single A classification. Levette, play action pass, wants to throw, does, complete to Napoleon. He's across midfield, makes a move. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line goes Chance Napoleon. Redula Wilson makes the stop, but not before Jansen Napoleon rolls for 26 yards. Well, I'm sure LeVette came and, and read the press clippings of what Philip Dees can do, and I guess he feels like he has something to prove right here. He's been perfect on the mark. It's Jansen Napoleon uh, with a good pass play, a sideline pass play tackle made by Redula Wilson. But I tell you, St. James is chewing up some serious real estate already in a uh, fine field position into the Evangel territory. 5'9", 155 pounds is Terry Levesque, the quarterback. We'll have the strength of his formation to the right side. Now it'll reset with a man in motion, and Keller will go off in the misdirection to the right side, one of the classic wing key plays. Coleman and Pittman making the stop. Pick up on the play of, well, just about four yards. Call it second and six. As you mentioned, misdirection here, and this is this wing tee. Open up so many options. It's it's multifaceted, and and uh, Trevor Charles, uh, Alex Keller, I should say, is you know he's 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 powerful. He's got good speed, as we as we alluded to, but he can catch the ball. He's got 20 grabs for five touchdowns, so he'll catch the ball coming out of the backfield as well. Option Keller, far side. He's got room. Following the block of Charles, turns it up the field, and he picks up enough another first down. Philip Geiger makes the stop, but what a great lead block by number 44, Renee Trevor Charles who just stuck with his man on the outside. That allowed Keller to make the turn. Yeah, that is, that made this play go. That is one of the most difficult things people can't appreciate, a downfield block like that. You don't have eyes behind your head. He got airborne right there, but Trevor Charles down there leading the block for his teammate, Alex Keller, makes the play go, and it's a first down, and, and Alex Keller is really starting to get beat up just a little bit. First and 10 for the Wildcats, down at the 26-yard line of the Eagles. Four-man defensive front for Evangel. Lovey getting the signal from the sidelines, calls the play. He's got Napoleon as the lone wide receiver, backs are split. Three-step drop, he'll look Napoleon's way, toss the complete. Napoleon makes a move at the 15, still being ridden out of bounds, down at the 12-yard line. Radula Wilson on the stop, Brad Cobb on the stop, and Napoleon is slow to get up. We have fallen on the ball, and... Boy, he's dangerous. Get the ball in his hands, and a 5'10", 175-pound senior can really light it up. He's, just, he's made a, about four or five grabs thus far. Good pass right here, a little sideline pass. Not an easy pass to throw. 
is an opportunity. Puts a move right there on Lewis and brought to the ground by Radula Wilson and company. But uh, I tell you, Napoleon is just another weapon in their arsenal. Well, that's so far passing, Renee. Four of five, 65 yards. Napoleon with all of those catches thus far. Lovett taking his time, and we're told there has not been a third down yet this fast moving game. Hand off Dabney, counter on the inside. He'll bust the 10 yard line, get down to about the eight. They can pick up a first down at the three. Can the St. James Wildcats? Dabney just moves the pile with that 216 pound frame. He controls the middle. He's the guy that keeps you honest. He's that, that true fullback in the wing tee. And, uh, averaging 6.4 yards every time he touches the ball, 17 touchdowns. You know, they have so many weapons. Who do you stop? You, you stop a halfback, you stop a fullback, you stop a wide receiver, you stop a tight end, you stop a quarterback. There's always someone to step up for the wildcat. Levette could eat center. They'll keep the ball with the quarterback option at the five. Touchdown, Kerry Levette. Well, one of the things your quarterback needs to do in a wing T offense is make good decisions, and Kerry Lovett made a good decision on that play. He did. That's his fifth rushing, rushing touchdown of the campaign of the season, and Kerry Lovett, just great vision right there. Uh, not a big guy, 160 pounds, good ball handling skills right here. Cuts it back, sees the crease, credits some good blocking right here, takes a shot right there by Kurt Coleman but not big enough to, uh, Kerlman's 200 pounds, but not big enough to stop the 160-pound Levet. The extra point is up and good by Andrew Dennis. It's no good, check that. Kick is no good, off to the side. 13-7, the final count. Here at 5.39, left in the first quarter, we'll take this time out and come back with more excitement for the AAA game. Here's another look at the touchdown, Renee. Good decision making by Lovett. Good view from the camera view right here. Lovett just spots a crease. That's just good, outstanding running. Uh, it's just, you know, just a feel for where you have to be and an instinctive running, if you will. Hands the ball and just like, uh, I've been there before. Contact at the three and he kept moving. He wanted that end zone. Momentum is leg strength. He's, you know, he's a good athlete. He's a good baseball player, a pitcher. And, He's an emotional kind of guy. He can really pick up this team, and he's worth some points to him just being on the field. The kickoff by Dabney going into the end zone. Davis will watch it there, and Evans will put it in play first and 10 from its own 20. And if I was to tell you that after two possessions, one team here in the AAA state finals, Renee, would have 170 yards of total offense, you'd probably tell me it would be Evangel but it's actually St. James with a very prolific offense here in the first two drives. Well, Evangel comes, I mean, uh, St. James comes into this game averaging 360 yards offense each time they step on the field each game. So they're close to half yeah, their they, average in, in the first two drives. Quarter. Right. Here comes the fun and gun. Lots of movement all around as Philip Dees resets two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. One running back, no tight end. He's calling for the ball. They retreat to his tent, shuttle pass. Down on the inside, and nowhere to go is Jelani Lewis. It'll go down as a completion, but Jeremy Harry, the right tackle, only a sophomore will make the stop. And even when a play doesn't look like it, it does much for, for Evangel, it picks up three yards. Well, Jelani Lewis is a guy, you get the ball in his hands, four, five, five, uh, four, five speed, but, uh, as you mentioned, Harry just put the put the brakes on him right here, was was joined by his teammates, but Dees drops back in that nine-yard drop back and had called for a good snap by McKeel. James McKeel, credit at the center with uh, every time he snaps it back, it's an outstanding snap. Dees wants the pass. He will, firing the ball down the field, complete. That's Lewis, he'll have a first down as he gets across the 30, up to the 34-yard line. Terrence Brooks actually with that reception. Well, Brooks' first reception of the AAA state championship. And it'll be a first down. Those chains will move and get a good look at it right here, Renee. Great protection. Drops back in the pocket. Hits uh, Brooks down on the flat. And, and Brooks, he's the runner in that, that offense. Uh, if you need some tough yards, Brooks is the one. Doesn't happen very often, but third and short, you can count on Brooks getting it. Motion, Duncan Tell. Running play to the left side, Robert Davis. 
Davis across the 45 up to the 46 yard line. That's a first down pickup. And that's what that wide open passing attack will do for you, Renee. It'll, it'll open up some running plays on the very first running play of the game for Evangel. There's a lot of running room around the corner. You mentioned earlier that Davis was uh, was a performer for Logan Sport last year, and he just, he can change the complexion of a game. He was an all-state defensive back in 94 and 95. Now he's playing more exclusively on offense for uh, Evangel. He took over that 1A game last year in the second half, leading Logan Sport to the one-point victory. Duncan Tell, motion out of the backfield. Dees wants the pass, drops at his own 35, tosses the ball, complete to Booty. Booty hog tied right around the 43-yard line. He'll be close to a first down. Melvin Barnes making the stop. You just can't get pressure on Phillip Dees with, 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 with that deep drop, that deep shotgun that he's in. That's precision passing. And I'll tell you what, he reminds me a lot of. He reminds me of Joe Montana. But he reminds me a lot of Dan Fouts. Would follow through, great follow through. And uh, I tell you, he's six foot two, 190 pounds, and, and he's going to be quite a catch. He is quite a catch for North Carolina. And Mac Brown. Coming into this game thus far this season, all, over 4,200 yards passing, 50 touchdowns. As you mentioned, Renee, on his career with the touchdown toss he's already had here tonight, 136 touchdown passes. And he played but a few games. First down pickup on the play for Evangel. He played but a few games his freshman year because that was Booty's senior year. Booty had a hand injury. He came in for three games of that year and threw for 1,000 yards in three games when Booty had a hand injury. But the thing, you know, what makes a good quarterback, he's fearless. He'll stand up in the rush and, and he'll, you know, he'll face the rush. And the thing is, too, not only is he a good football player, Gerald, he has never made a B in his life. Straight A's, grammar school and high school. So what an individual solid citizen he is going to be. Personable young man, too, talking to him before the contest. Very friendly. First and 10 from the Wildcat 43. That's booting in motion right to left. Dees looks to run, a little handoff on the inside, and that's Brooks, and as you mentioned, Renee, tough running on the inside for Brooks. Does not net much in this case, as he is generally their go-to guy in the running situations. Fleming and Bourne making the stop for the Wildcats. Kind of like that counter delay, and, and uh, Brooks, you know, 5'11", 194, he's, he's uh, being looked at as a prospect by Northwest Louisiana and Magnese. This offense is patterned after Louisiana Tech with uh, Denny Duran, who's, who's the athletic director, was an All-American quarterback for the Bulldogs some time, some time back. And uh, a lot of this offense, uh, Coach Dunn and Coach Duran uh, really have, and all the coaches here have done an outstanding job. Of course, we know the records that were set at La Tech this year. Toss sweep, far side is Davis. Across the 40, across the 35, still going inside the 30, down to the 28. It's like every time each team touches the ball, it's 10 yards. It's 10 yards and then some. Andrew Dennis finally escorting Davis out of bounds. Well, there's Davis getting some lead blocked by Duncan Tell, but Davis with 4-4 speed, and he's a multi-dimensional guy. He is he has taken back six kickoffs for touchdowns this year. And, you know, there's a host of colleges looking at him. We'll talk about that. But he can play wide receiver, defensive back, or running back, as he just did. See the offense shifting and moving around. You get an appreciation for just how much moving Evangel actually does when he gets up to the line of scrimmage. Good look at Dees as he barks the signals. Flag on the play. Dees will roll to the near sideline. Now with the setup going the far away, he'll feel a little pressure for the first time. And he'll almost try to throw it away, and it's almost picked off by Melvin Barnes. It's been a big play for St. James. Let's read the flag. Motion against Evangel. So that'll move the Eagles back five yards. And you credit good coaching, Renee, to Dennis Dunn for all the different multiple formations the offense shows. And there's not motion penalties more often. Well, you know, the thing is, too, with all the things going on, you're lucky you don't have more penalties. But you got to be a pretty intelligent individual to run this kind of offense. Philip Dees is 4.0 student. And Melvin Barnes right now almost had a grab for St. James. He's pretty... The penalty is declined. We'll play second down. Melvin Barnes is being looked at closely by Tulane, Northeast, Nichols, and Magnese, and Tulane has offered already. And that's the first time St. James has gotten a little heat on Dees, and he showed there making a poor decision by throwing that ball into coverage. That's got to be something I'm sure the St. James coaches are picking up on if they can only get to him. That's the key, though. They've got to get to him. He's so deep in the pocket every time. Well, he was doing a 3-4 defense the first few series. First series, they're in a 4-3 now. Dees from beneath center. 
toss sweep near side. Davis, he'll turn the corner. And some 20, down to the 15. Bumped out of bounds by Tevis Smith, the left safety. The night before, Davis picks up a first down. A 14-yard pickup for Robert Davis, who has seen extended playing time here running the ball. And Davis, 175. Uh, he's, he's got enough to, to turn the corner. As we said, he's 4-4 guy. He keeps you honest. But uh, I'll tell you, the weapons they have, Davis and, and Brooks and Lewis, Duncan Tell, not to mention Abram Booty. They just have so many weapons. It's tough to just concentrate on one area. Wishbone look now for Evangelist. Three running backs are behind Geese. Now Brooks is set on the left-hand side in the slot. Duncan Tell will go in motion. Davis, your lone back. He'll get the pitch. Toss sweep left. Has some trouble. He'll turn it outside from there and pick up three, maybe four yards before Jer Jeremy Harry makes the stop. And Davis just ran away from Chad Parker here. He had a good shot on the watch. Number 32 right here. This is just speed. Breaks through, splits the blockers. He just runs away from him here. And, and Robert Davis showing that speed. Uh, LSU, Florida, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Nebraska, and Notre Dame are hot on his trail, and he's going to make a great catch for one of those universities. Clock rolling, 2-14 remaining in the first quarter, 13-7, St. James over Evangel. Second down and seven from the nine-yard line. Davis, near side, turns it inside, and will get one, maybe two. Daniel Bourne making the stop. So Evangel running it a little bit more on this possession, Renee, than the first possession when they took but three plays to move 83 yards. All three plays, a pass. Well, Tremaine Harry Harrison helped out Daniel Bourne, but you just know they're going to throw a pass any time here, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to be it. If they run three times in a row, you know a pass is coming. Timeout Evangel, they want to talk about it on the first third down conversion of the game. 142 remaining in the first quarter, 13-7 Wildcats over the Eagles. We'll take this time out and come back to the AAA state championship game. And six, first third down conversion, and I guess you would say Evangel's gonna pass right here. They'll, they'll go back to their bread and butter. Yeah, they got you. It's Rick Gailey, boy, he's pondering the situation. You can just hear what he's thinking right now. Wideouts left and right. Motion, that's Davis in the wideout spot. D's beneath center. He'll drop back, five-step drop, feel some pressure. He'll be flushed out of the backfield. Now he's running all over the place, looking for someone to toss the ball to, and Will throwing it wisely this time. Out over Abram Booty's head. He showed some scrambling ability there, and and uh, Philip D's just uh, probably about a 4'6", four, 4'7". Four, uh, uh, Fleming is the guy. Uh, is the guy who put a little pressure on him and, and made him throw the ball away. You can see, and there he is, Tenelius Fleming coming at him. And t uh, Fleming is 6'7", so he's got quite a frame. And then he faces Bourne right here and to throw it away in the direction of Abram Booty. But we have, uh, there's going to be no field goal coming here, but it's going to be a, this is going to be a, a, a touchdown attempt at least. They're going for it on fourth and six from the eight. Six guys up on the line of scrimmage for the Wildcats. Dees calling for the ball. He'll take a low snap. Throw the ball towards the end zone. Caught, but stopped short of the end zone and stopped short of the first down. Jelani Lewis had the reception. Credit Tevis Smith, it appeared, coming up with a big hit by St. James. And Tevis Smith, great coverage, third-year starter. He just lays the lumber, and you can hear wood crack. Watch this. Right here, catches it, and... Bang, right inside or the outside of the first down marker. They did not get a first down. Or they, it's going to well, be very, very close. They're going to measure it. But but I tell you, I don't think he got it. But I'll tell you what, credit Smith with this stop. I mean, Lewis had no chance to even turn right there. As soon as he tried to turn the ball, that, that's timing it perfectly. And they did not get the first down. St. James has held. Wow. What a stop by Tevis Smith. And a senior Smith is only 145 pounds. Ran into Jelani Lewis, 135. So that wasn't exactly a, a uh, uh, <laughs> it wasn't exactly a collision of two behemoths or anything. But uh, that was quite a collision. You could hear it up here. Let's take a look at it in real time, Renee. Bang! Bang. You wow! You can see the vibration in the camera when they collided. So 130 remaining in the first quarter. 13-7, Wildcats over the Eagles. St. James will have the ball. 
first and ten at its own three-yard line. Lovett will give it to Charles, three, deep, three yards deep in his own end zone. He'll get back up to his own five-yard line. Cobb making the stop. And this is tough down here in your own territory. Of course, there's uh, you know, so much ball handling on St. James's part. They, they don't fumble a ball very much, hardly at all, but uh, and they need to move out of their, the shadow of their end zone and, and move up the field quite a bit. Uh, you, can, you can expect them to dial Alex Keller once again, and don't think that Evangel's defense is not expecting that as well. Levet beneath center. Play action pass. Stands in his own end zone. Leaving the ball deep down the field. Almost caught, but incomplete. Napoleon covered by Geiger. And a good effort by both players. Good pass by Levet. Geiger's only a freshman. Uh, he's an all-city, all-parish performer as a, a freshman. 4-5 speed. And boy, he got back pretty quickly from his left cornerback position. And, you know, he's going to be a great player. He's been a freshman starter here, Evangel. Just airs it out, shows what kind of arm strength uh, Levette has. And, and uh, Geiger broke up a, an outstanding play right there. Good pressure up the middle applied by Radula Wilson. Third down and a long eight. St. James deep in its own territory. Levette on the counter gives it to Keller. He's breaking tackles, but... Not too much more past the five, and they credit it with coming up to the six. Maybe a gain of one. So St. James facing its first punting situation. So the first, it was a first for both teams here. The first time both of them were facing a, a third down situation. Good look right there at Alex Keller. Uh, 19 seconds. What an exciting first quarter that this has been. Well, each team racing up and down the field before. St. James's defense held, stopping Evangel on fourth down, and Evangel's defense holding there, stopping St. James on a fourth down as the first quarter winds down. 13-7, the Wildcats are on top of the Eagles in this AAA state championship game here from the Louisiana Superdome. <laughs> Guards on the day. For Evangel, 159 total yards. So if you multiply that out by four, you get some big numbers. I'm not a mathematician, but I know that one, 173 and 159 times four is big. I just know it's big. Yeah, it is big, trust me. Okay, here's the situation. Kerry Lovett will be punting for St. James. He stands seven yards deep in his own end zone. Davis and Lewis deep, but really not that deep. They'll stand at the St. James 35, awaiting Levette's punt. Good snap, no rush. The return is on. Levette gets off of beauty. He drives Lewis all the way back to his 47. Stutter steps, turns it up the field. He does a good job of getting positive yardage out of a punt that went over his head. A 41-yard punt, 10-yard return. Melvin Barnes hustling down the field to make the stop. There's a small field for the Evangel offense to work. Yeah, they shrink the field pretty quickly, don't they? Jelani Lewis, 4-5, he's pure speed. And here comes Dr. Dees, ready to slice up the St. James defense. They did a number on him last time, held him to four downs uh, down near their, near their end zone. And he wants to kind of, wants to reprieve this series and come back and do something. Well, the difference, the last Evangel drive starting at its own 20 before it ran out of gas at the St. James 3. This starting at the St. James 37. That's closer to the end zone. He's beneath center. We've seen this look a few times now in the last couple of series. He wants the pass. He'll drop, looking deep for Davis, who's open. The ball knocked away at the last moment by number six, Jared Howard for St. James. Good defensive play by Howard as Davis was momentarily open, Renee, and Howard closed the gap quickly. Yeah, great closing speed, and and Jared Howard with 4.65 speed, and he's done an outstanding job in the playoffs. This is when he's really shown uh, an outstanding job in the playoffs, and only 144 pounds, but he stayed step for step with Robert Davis, and that's no easy task for any defensive back on any level. Robert Davis holding some records of his own, Renee, most receiving yards, 233, and most touchdown receptions, five. Those are all single-A records held by Robert Davis last year playing for Logan Sport against Mangum. Second and 10, Dees in a nine-yard shotgun. 
flag on the play. He'll toss the ball complete to Booty. He's operating at the 25. Slips one tackle. He gets down near the 20-yard line, but hold the train. There's a flag on the play. Harrison and Dennis finally make the stop of an elusive Booty. Boy, what a fluid receiver he is. Got the great hands, the gift of grab, and, and he's got the fluid moves. And it's going against the Eagles. Motion, the call, so a nice reception. Nullified and brought back. And with a five-yard penalty, it'll be second down and 15. I don't believe I'm being premature when I say some of the guys we're watching on the Superdome floor in this game and some other contests we're going to see on Sunday afternoons oh, in a few years. No doubt it's about that it. that kind of talent coming out of Louisiana. No doubt about it. And what's amazing for a school like Evangel is that only being around four years, they can put together such a fine array of talent. Booty in the backfield, that's in motion now. He'll go into the familiar receiver role and go out. Dees looks the pass. He'll need the pressure, he'll elude the rush, now he'll run. Gets knocked out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. Barnes pushing him out of bounds. So it'll be third down and about 10 for Evangel as Dees showed good decision making there, Renee, by holding on to the ball and getting something positive out of it. As Landry flushes him out of the backfield and he scampers down the sidelines. Puts a good pump fake right there, but uh, as you mentioned, Barnes forces him out, and Barnes is a defensive back, one of the best in this area, and uh, he's gonna be playing at the next level uh, as he's graduating as a senior. Credit to St. James secondary with holding the Evangel receivers on that play, forcing the run. Third down and a smidge of less than 10, call it nine, low snap, he scoops it off the carpet, looks the pass, it does, sets up the screen to Lewis, who's wide open, makes a move, cuts back at the 30, inside the 30, close to a first down marker. All these guys are great open field runners. And, uh, you know, they, they're running backs receivers, and you have to be a, have a multitude of, of talents to play in an offense like Evangel possesses right here. Jelani Lewis, 5'7", uh, 135. Well, he gets his hands on the ball and, and uses that 4'5 speed and just a great open field runner. Uh, you know, I tell you what, it's just, it's amazing what they can do. They have so many weapons. Measurement for the play. You know, Renee, a lot of folks feeling that Evangel, the best team in the state, regardless of classification, that if you'd have a composite state championship, that they would be the ones to come out on top. Of course, they'll, they'll beat some of the better teams in the state. They'll beat first down for Evangel on the play as uh, Brooks stretches it out. You see them beat double-A state champion Haynesville. We've seen them beat Archbishop Shaw. That took Catholic to overtime in the semifinals of the 5A game. You know, Evangel is just, just a, has had an outstanding year and an outstanding tradition as well. Well, keep in mind, St. James ain't chopped liver either. You know, right now, they're, they're on top of the, of the school board, and this game is a far, far cry from being decided with a lot of time left here in the second quarter. And I also need to mention the win over Neville to begin the season to defending 5A state champs. That's Davis running the ball over the right tackle, and he won't get much as the slant will net maybe two, three yards. Call it second down, and a long seven or a short eight. Davis with 38 carries for 460 yards, 12 touchdowns, so he not only catches the ball, he can run with it as he's done. This is the most he's run in a while, I believe. Uh, he's a, a game breaker and a difference maker. Robert Davis, he's just a guy that you can insert so many places. Davis has carried the ball six times, 48 yards on the day. He's in his familiar nine-yard shotgun position. Falling for the ball, good snap. He'll retreat back several more yards, now sling the ball down the field, looking towards the end zone. Booty drops it in the end zone. You don't see that happen much. Kevin Smith on the coverage, providing a, a little interference, but it appeared that Booty had a shot at bringing that one in. Well, it was kind of a low throw. He had to scoop it up like a shortstop may scoop it up, but it was a little bit of a low throw, and Dees is back there nine yards back. Good protection in the pocket. Throws a little low for Booty. Right, it's, it would have been a tough catch to make, and as you mentioned, Tevis Smith defending, and Tevis Smith, not a bad athlete himself. Four or five speed, and a third-year starter, and so it's talent against talent there. Third down. Dees, 8 for 12 for passing, trying to get completion number 9. He'll swing it to the near, the far sidelines. Booty will receive it. 
but it does not appear to be enough for a first down. Melvin Barnes applying the pressure, and Booty made his cut right before the first down marker. Didn't quite run the route deep enough, Renee, and it'll appear that Evangel will have a fourth down. They've gone for it once already. Let's see if they'll go for it again. Well, I think he had to cut it off a little short here. That's all the defense gave him, and uh, Barnes was, was, was guarding him pretty closely, so it's going to be a decision time here. They'll measure it. It's close enough to measure, but from our vantage point, it appears to be short. And it is. So, fourth down, down around the 17. You know, if you kicked a field goal before, you'd be kicking one here to tie the score. For Evangel, when they went for it on fourth down, down inside the five-yard line of St. James, I would imagine they would go for it again at the 17. But do you call a, a running play or a passing play if you're Dennis Dunn? I, I, I can see you're probably going to get in the hands of, uh, of either Brooks or, or Robert Davis. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. Perhaps it might even be a quarterback sneak for all we know. But uh, I, I would expect this to be a running play here. You're not going to risk a pass in such a short yard situation. 9.51 remaining in the half. 13-7, St. James on top of Evangel. Fourth down, less than a yard. Handoff, first back through, and they called it Brooks. Surges forward and picks up the first down. He was not but a yard back from Dees, almost in Dees' hip pocket. Brooks took the handoff from Dees and surged ahead and moved the chains. First and 10, Evangel. And Pirro, look, just a good block right here. Comes from the right guard and buries the inside guy uh, on his inside shoulder in his 5'11", 285-pound frame. Uh, this is a good blocking guard here. Southern's taking a good look at Firo, so he'll play at the next level. Uh, Evangel has about six players that's going to move up to the college level next year on offense only. First and 10 from just inside the St. James 15. Toss sweep near side. Davis tries to turn the corner. He's being strung out and will not. Driven out of bounds by a host of St. James tacklers. A late flag comes flying out. Chad Parker was the one to bump him out of bounds, but... There's potentially some extracurricular activity on the near sidelines as Davis was being roughed up as he was clearly out of bounds. Well, Jared Howard did string it out for St. James, but unfortunately, there was a little extra contact on the sidelines. Breaking through here, that's Landry forced it, and then you can see right here where Howard forced him to go wide. He's followed up by a good hit by Chad Parker, and then I think the finishing touch right here by a host of, of guys, probably Martin Harry was the one that that probably buried the, the hammer right there, buried the axe in him. So St. James penalized half the distance to the goal First line. Foul against the defense, it'll be second down. It'll remain second down. It'll be second down. And about four yards to go with the ball spotted at the eight yard line. There's another look at it. Just one push too many after he was out of bounds. Second down into four, the ball at the St. James eight yard line. Dees beneath center. Backs are split behind him. And off to Duncan Tell, surging inside the five, down to the four, goes senior running back, Jeff Duncan Tell. Jeremy Harry making the stop on Duncan Tell's first carry. Well, Duncan Tell averaging 15.8 yards per carry. He was an All-State as a South four. Good hands, he is a career leading rusher, only 155 pounds. But uh, don't overlook Duncan Tell. You'll hear his name quite a bit. He'll probably give Davis a blow, but you know, he's he's a great individual effort on a, a talent in his own right. Close enough to measure as the chains will come across. Of course, we mentioned Renee, Evangel's number one ranking in the state, St. James' number two ranking in AAA. Evangel getting some national consideration, the only Louisiana team to be ranked in the USA top 25. They are ranked number 23. You can see Duncan Tell just short of the first down. They are one of three on third down conversions. So when you reach the USA Today, you are at program status. A handful of Louisiana teams have made it there recently. Of course, John Curtis has. Hanville did a couple years ago when Darren Barbier was still there, and they finished their season by beating Washita here for a state final. Salmon spent some time there the last few seasons, and now Evangel. So the list of Louisiana teams that make the top 25 nationally, few and far between, you have to have success year in and year out, not just a one-year deal. Third down and less than a yard for the Eagles. This is the 10th play of the current drive that started at the St. James 37. 
They just load up the bear at the line of scrimmage. Dees will hand it off to Brooks. Cracking the four down to the four. St. James' faithful erupts, but it appears that Brooks picked it up. Harry and Harrison making the stop. The Mike and Sam linebackers. And they will probably measure it again, but it appears that it is a first down. It would be first and goal for Evangel. Kind of a, a long drive, 11 plays at this point, Renee, and they just started at the St. James 37 and motored down to the four. Generally speaking, with the way they came out with their first drive, did Evangel a three-play, 83-yard drive. You'd think they'd cover 37 yards quicker than 11 plays. It is a first down. They won't even measure it. First and goal from the four. D's beneath center. He'll hand the ball off to Brooks again. Surging for the end zone. Touchdown, Evangel. Terrence Brooks, the senior, running back, scurrying in from four yards out. And Evangel has not at the game at 13 with an extra point try still to come. And the right side of the line open a gaping hole for him. That's Joyner and Piro along with Cole Pittman. Really opening a gaping hole for Brooks to prance through as, as uh, you mentioned, Evangel ties the score up at 13 apiece with the extra point coming. But uh, really, just a few arm tackles. He ran through a couple of collisions near the goal, goal line, but the damage had already been done. Brad Todd set to kick the extra point. Good snap, good placement, almost blocked. Good kick is up and good. 8-16 left until halftime. Evangel with the lead, their first of the game, 14-13. We're joining the AAA State Championship game here from the Louisiana Superdome. We'll be back right after this timeout. Slim 14-13 lead over St. James. How you like this for scoring drives? That last one, 37 yards, 11 plays, 344 off the clock. Four-yard touchdown run by Brooks as the kickoff comes down to Napoleon as he takes it at the five, makes a cut at the 20, and he'll get stopped short of the 30 around the 28-yard line. But how you like this for scoring drives? For Evangel, their average scoring drive, two minutes and 10 seconds. For St. James, one minute and 20 seconds. So each team moving the ball crisply down the field when they score. They don't waste any time, I'll tell you that. They don't waste any time. 29-yard line. Trailing by a single point, 14-13. Each team has scored twice, St. James missing an extra point. Hand off on first down is Keller. And that splashy, cooling wing tee style offense. And Keller is slow to get up. But he does pop up. Well, he's a real football player, as we mentioned. Averaging 8.8 .8 yards per carry. Uh, Trevor Charles, 9.8 yards per carry. And, and Dabney, 6.4 yards per carry. So no matter who you give it to is going to cause, going to punch a hole in your defense and have some serious weapons, not to mention Levent can run or pass as he's done thus far. Levent beneath center. He'll look to pass. Roll out on his left-hand side, crossing against the natural tendency of his body. He will overshoot his receiver. Good coverage by Radula Wilson, who had Alex Keller blanketed. We gave you a... Wrong stat a second ago, Renee. We said St. James' average drive has been 120. It's actually been 250 on their scoring drives. So St. James That's taking 250, an average time when they score, and Evangel taking 210. So they, each team moving the ball down the field quickly. And Levette threw it <coughs> across, across the bow as Radula Wilson kind of gambled a little bit for the interception. And uh, you get past him, and, and it's clear ceiling down the sideline, nothing but green turf. And as Kerry Levette, I have a tiger. Levette options the ball out to Charles. He'll try to make the turn at the 35 and does, but he'll get stopped short of the first down. He needed to get up to the 39. Here's he's a couple of yards shy. And it'll look like it'll be fourth down for St. James. A closer inspection, he's actually closer to a yard of the first down. Just about. Marco Coley coming up to make the stop from his Mike linebacker spot. Here's a good look at the play. He had a good pitch out there. Good blocking downfield by Keller allows Charles to scoot up for a few yards before he's engulfed by white jerseys and and that evangel defense is not easy to run against fourth and short Levette checks in he'll be punny Booty drops back deep for evangel he'll stand at his own 33 Levette kicking the ball away high wobbly kick it'll bounce at the 35 Booty will retreat he'll dribble out of bounds Right at the 27-yard line, a 35-yard kick for Kerry Levette. 
Houston with 6.32 remaining in the first half. The Eagles with a one-point advantage, 14-13. We'll take to the offensive side of the field once again. And here comes Dr. Dees once again. You know, you got some, uh, we talked about some of the players here that uh, outstanding. Uh, there's probably six college prospects on offense for Evangel and, and a couple on defense. Uh, but you know, there's, there's a lot of guys coming back. We're gonna talk about that, how much youth is in this team and, and how much, you know, Evangel is gonna be competing for the next few years because you have some freshmen and sophomores starting on this team right now. Here we go, first and 10 from its own 28. Dees and the shotgun. We'll put Duncan Tell in motion. Hand off, counter, right side, Lewis. He'll slip out of one tackle and crack the 30 and get up to the 32. Chad Parker making the stop for St. James. Some wizardry, if you will, by Phil D. Some mastery at, at uh, handling the ball and uh, hands off the ball to Jelani Lewis. Uh, it, it's tough. You got to keep your eye on both these teams. With, with the wing T of, of St. James, you really need to be uh, have keep your eye on the ball and and uh, watch out for all the fake uh, ball fakes. Four down linemen for the Wildcats. They'll spread it out on defense. Dees drops back to his own 20. Down to the 18. He'll pop and release, and he'll find Davis, his wide receiver. Open up around the 45-yard line. Jared Howard finally bumps him out of bounds. It's a first down, and I'll tell you, the St. James secondary giving a large pad, Renee, to these Evangel wide receivers. A good look run the legs of James McKeel. And uh, as Dees drops back, throws that out pattern to Robert Davis. He runs it expertly and wide open as he's bumped out of bounds by Howard, but not before he picks up a first down for the Eagles. First and 10, Evangel 46. Dees beneath center. Drop back, look the pass. He's hit as he throws the ball. And the ball is tipped away at the last second by Barnes. Booty was the intended receiver. Barnes was right there with him step for step. And now, I, I, I want to say as the ball's in the air that it's overthrown, but we've seen Booty catch up to him already today, so you really can't tell that the ball finally comes down, but Barnes had excellent coverage. You see the heat coming from Howard right here on the, on the weak side, and as he launches it to Booty, Booty go, switches to defense because that was close to a, an interception by Melvin Barnes, and that's a matchup. Melvin Barnes and Abram Booty, both are major college prospects. You see Howard coming here. And he could have taken, I tell you what, he could have buried his helmet in him or shoulder pads, didn't do it. Shows what kind of class these guys have for each other, kind of respect. Counter to the near side, Brooks has it. He'll struggle across midfield, get down to the 47-yard line. Andrew Dennis making the stop. Dees with 143 yards thus far through the air. He needs 165 today to set the national passing record. And this is his last game as a senior at Evangel Christian Academy. We, we, we had a look at McKeel a little while ago, the center, and they say he's the best center they've ever seen, and they've seen some great ones come through here. The last three centers to play at Evangel are the college level right now. He's beneath center. Blitz St. James. Ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Chad Parker, the weak inside linebacker, coming on the blitz, the senior. Got his... Arms on a 6-1 frame extended, and it'll be fourth down for Evangel, and it appears that we'll see Brad Cobb in a punting formation for the first time today. They collapse that pocket, and here comes Parker stretching his arms up, and he's the enthusiastic leader. He plays a lot of finesse, uh, finesse defense and knocks it away, swats it away, so now it'll be a punting situation for the Eagles, and they, they, they don't find themselves in a punting situation too often. Fourth down and four. As Kaba waits the snap, and it's a fake. Coming up short, and short of the first down as well, is Justin Coggins running the ball. And Coggins is stopped short, so credit St. James, Renee. Evangel's gambled twice on fourth down, and twice St. James has stopped him. And the Wildcats will take over. Ukagans is a linebacker on defense, a strong safety, they call him, but he takes the up snap right here and thought they'd catch him flat-footed, didn't do it, 
and another big play made by Chad Parker, and he's made two outstanding plays in a row, knocking the ball down fast and now making his fourth down tackle. First down pass is incomplete. Marco Cooley right there. 4.47 remaining until halftime, 14-13. Evangel on top of St. James. And that was pass was intended for Elzey, and he's a big target, 6'6", 213 pounds, all-district basketball player. And Levette just was slammed to the ground by Cole Pittman. Didn't get a chance to really put much muster on that throw, and uh, incomplete second down, 4.47 to go, and St. James trails by a single digit. Levette, single wide out, near side, motion, that's Keller. He'll keep it himself, turn it upfield, cross the 50, and Ash down to about the 47-yard line. Good pickup of six yards with the senior quarterback. It'll be second down and four. Levette, and, and, and I tell you, he's got the eye of a tiger, buddy. He's, he's just got the heart of a lion. He's, he's such a gutsy kind of guy. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's done so much for this team. He's the gasoline that runs the engine. And, uh, you know, he's, he's an extra weapon. He's, he's not only can pass, but he can run the ball. So he's just another foot soldier in that, in that backfield. St. James 0 for 2 on third down conversions. This is a third and a long three from the Evangel 47. Play action pass. Levette tosses the ball downfield. Complete to Charles. He's got the first down and more all the way down to the 30-yard line. Radula Wilson finally making the stop. A pickup on the play of 17 yards. And as Charles running his route, he does, does a little curl right, curl route right in the middle. Finds his spot, jumps up, cradles the ball, protects it. Then he's slammed to the ground by a host of white jerseys, but he does have the first down. Great play, hookup from Levette to Charles. And Napoleon was in the same neck of the woods, Renee, their top receiver. So you would think that that play may not work because of Napoleon being right there, drawing so much attention for Charles, as you mentioned, finding his spot. First down run by Dabney as he crosses the 30. Gets down to the 29. Pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight. And Dabney carries the ball into a host of, of uh, a sea of white. Uh, we mentioned a couple of freshmen, Satter White and Geiger, both starting freshmen for this team, which, you know, a defense that's going to return seven players next year. Satter White and Geiger, both freshmen, both all city, all parish performers. That says a lot, all district performers as well. Single wide out on the near side for the Wildcats. Leve options it out to Charles, sweeping on the far side. May have picked one, probably not. Probably got back to the line of scrimmage. Radula Wilson stringing that one out well. Also, Philip Geiger there for the Eagles. Coley put his hat in there, and the sophomore really helped string it out from his Mike linebacker position. Uh, and they say Mar Marco Coley will be the best, number 20 right there, will be the best before he leaves here. As Radula Wilson fighting off a block from Alex Keller and get some helps there from Geiger. So now they're looking at a third and nine situation and uh, decision time here for the Wildcats. Wildcats one of three on third down conversions, converting their last third down conversion on a pass from Levette to Charles. Now this one, a challenging third and nine from the Evangel 30-yard line. Charles on the counter, tries to turn it inside, he'll lose the yard. Byron Dawson making the stop. Now it's decision time, fourth down for St. James. They've missed an extra point. Do you have enough faith in your field goal unit to convert, which would be close to a 46-yard field goal? Or do you go for it on fourth down? Of course, I think they're going to go for it. Well, St. James here against the meet a couple of years ago, going for it on fourth down in the second half, not getting it on fourth and less than a yard. That proved to be the momentum swing in a game that found a meet winning the state championship. Of course, we're, we're very early here for a momentum swing. Yeah, but this is a long way. They're going to go for it. This, is a long, this would be a very long field goal. Too long of a field goal, too short to punt, just right to go for it. Fourth down and nine. Levette wants the pass, drops back, well protected, airs the ball out, looking for Keller at the goal line, jump ball, who's got it? Intercepted. Geiger coming down with the interception. It was either Elzey ball, Elzey's ball, or Geiger's ball, and Geiger came down with it. And Evangel put it in play first to 10 at their own 20. Not a bad call by St. James. Well, yeah, and it's, I guess, the same as a punt anyway, but Geiger comes up with his 12th interception of the season. He is already the all-time leading interceptor for Evangel, and he's only a freshman. He'll be a, a wide receiver in 1997, 5'11", 170. He'll fill that role that Abram Booty. You see a jump ball right here, and the athleticism of Geiger, only a freshman, 
beats uh, Alex Keller, comes up with the ball for Evangel, and now Evangel with the ball at their own 20-yard line, just over two minutes remaining before the halftime break. You know, St. James looking for a mismatch there, Renee, sending the running back out deep for the coverage, hoping to have a linebacker matched up against him, but it was a, a secondary player, so good defensive play by Evangel to sit tight. Back to live action as Dees is hustled down to the backfield and sacked around the 12-yard line. Terrence Landry, the right end, coming through to make the stop. Well, that was Landry and Bourne, and I think their plan was, let's meet at the quarterback, and that's exactly what they did as, as the walls caved in on Dees. And uh, Bourne and Landry just shut the door on Dees, and uh, he isn't sacked very often. Uh, but, uh, you know, they've gone back to a 4-3. They opened the game, St. James, with a 3-4. They were at their standard 4-3 with the four deep, and it's worked pretty good thus far. Second and 18. Clock spinning, 132 till halftime. Dee stands at his own goal line, tosses it, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Booty. Chad Parker had a shot for from his linebacker spot as he went, but we've seen Booty drop a couple here. Well, you don't see it very often. That, that was one, that, this was one he should have had. He wished he could have it back. The touchdown catch was a difficult task, but Booty just uh, may have heard footsteps or perhaps didn't find the handle, just looked away and tried to run before he had the ball, but. Uh, you won't see that happen very often. Now they're looking at a third and 18 situation following the sack on first down. St. James has all three of its timeouts with 128 remaining in the half. You want to be conservative here if you're Evangel. You don't want to turn it over, but you also need to pick up the first down because St. James will pick up the ball in good field territory with time remaining. Dees will retreat to his own goal line, set up, toss the screen to Duncan Tell incomplete. Duncan Tell wouldn't have got much even if he had a complete Terrence Landry, the junior right end, breathing down on him. So into the ball game for his second punt will be Brad Cobb for Evangel. Actually, Cobb's first because they faked the last punt attempt. What a defense. What a great defensive effort. And, and uh, they just put some pressure in the right spots and, and forced that sack. Really changed the complexion of this series a little bit. So credit that first sack. And I was born in Landry with changing uh, the complexion of this whole series. And this is why they're punting now. Watch. You don't know what's going to happen here. Well, I'll tell you, if they fake it here on fourth and 18, at their own 11 with 124 left in the half. They'll surprise me, that's for sure. Clean snap back to Cobb. He'll punt it away. Beautiful spiraling kick. That Keller will gather in at his own 45. Turn it up the field. He's at the opponent's 45. And down to the Eagle 40-yard line. A good return for Alex Keller. A 43-yard kick, a 15-yard return. And St. James has all three timeouts and 114 with which to work to try to erase a one-point deficit here in the first half of the AAA state championship game. Coach Gailey just talking to his troops saying, fellas, they're in our house. The St. James is right up the river from the Superdome, so uh, don't let them take anything away from our house and go back to Shreveport. And, and Rick Gailey is saying, we've worked very hard. We both have the same records. We want to come out of this with a W. St. James' best field position to start a drive. Levette looking to throw and does complete to Napoleon inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Levette gets up slowly, checking out his arm. He was buried by Cole P uh, Pittman just as he released the ball. The 6'4", 245-pound southpaw just buried him in the Superdome surface just as he released the ball. So he's taking a pounding just over a minute to go, Gerald. Clock stopped to move the chains, but it might be wise to spend a time out here. Levette trying to shake off the injury. They're going to let the clock spin inside a minute with all three timeouts. And Lovett will call the play from inside the 30. Hand off, Dabney, big hole through the middle, dragging tacklers down to the 20, down to the 19-yard line. He's still turning. He'll have close to 10 yards, and I'm sure they'll stop the clock now with 49 seconds left until halftime. It looked like a scrum half in, in a rugby game. You know, he got seven guys he's carrying. He's just moving. The whole tent was moving with him, and that is tremendous leg strength, uh, Dabney. And it is the first down, and St. James does take a timeout. 49 seconds left in the first half. It's Evangel on top of the Wildcats, 14-13 at this juncture. As the second half is winding down, there's another look at Dabney's power run. He just would not be denied, and you see some of the offensive linemen, a line that averages over 250 pounds, uh, have done an outstanding job blasting some holes through this Evangel defense, opening the opportunities for Charles Dabney and Keller to run through. Evangel, the two-time state champs, beating West St. John back in 1993, 29-22, and back in 1994, defeating West St. John 44-14. And of course, last year, their first year moving up, 
in a reclassification year. They lost to Cecilia in the semifinals, 31 to 28. And of course, Cecilia beating Carr for the state championship, 12 to nine that year right here in the Superdome. So they were just uh, a few points away from competing for the state championship game. That would be an interesting matchup to see Evangel and Carr. We may see that one day if Evangel remains at AAA, but they've got aspirations to move up to 5A, Renee. Well, wherever classification they're gonna be landing in, they're gonna be a force to be reckoned with because they're solid offensively, defensively, top to bottom. Just a, a, a good, solid athletic program, the Evangel in Shreveport, Louisiana. First and 10, Levette wants the pass, throws it for Charles, incomplete, in and out of Trevor's hands. 46 seconds remaining in the half. It'll be second down from the Evangel 19-yard line. And for your St. James, you want to come away with some points here right before halftime. Well, you have to, even if it's nothing more than a field goal. But they want to get down there and, and, uh, and test the defense. 46 ticks to go, and they're going to have to go through some short yardage tosses right here, stuff like this, maybe a middle toss coming up. Uh, the run has been working for him, but they have to open it up and keep the defense on it because if they, they can't run three more plays here and, and, and produce any points. And especially because Evangel will have the ball to begin the third quarter, so you want to end it positively here for St. James. Keller surging forward, almost down to the 15-yard line. St. James may take a timeout here, and they will. With 40 seconds remaining until halftime, 14-13, Eagles over the Wildcats. We'll take this timeout and come back with the conclusion of this first half the AAA state championship game from the Superdome. For St. James, as they attempt to con convert the third down play, they are one for four on third down conversions. Flags on the play, this one will not get off the ground as LaVey was sprinting out on the left-hand side. motion against St. James, and that'll make this third down conversion a little more difficult. Note passed along by our crew up here, Renee. Right now, Alex Keller, seven carries, 89 yards. St. James has 142 on the ground. False start against the offense. We'll play third down. Keller with more than half the yardage on the ground. Here at third and 11, I would imagine LeVay is going to look to throw, but here, you've still got a timeout. You've got 40 seconds left in the half. You're in you're in fourth down, you're in two down territory. They're gonna go for it on fourth down if they don't get it. Keller wants to go for it all. That was a little bit too tall for him, a little bit too long, and I don't think he realized how close he was. That was Jance Napoleon, and he didn't realize how close he was to that ball. and Just didn't extend his arms, it seemed like. Well, it had been a tough catch regardless. Over the shoulder catch would have been a tough catch to make, but uh, he didn't realize how close he was to the ball, and here comes a field goal attempt, and ah, Tough catch to make. Believe me, that's a very tough catch. It does. It's not as easy as it may look. So with 35 seconds remaining, Andrew Dennis will come in the ball game and he will attempt a 37-yard field goal out of the hold of Kenny Levet. Snap is back. Ball is down. Kick is up. Dennis, a straight-on kicker. It'll be close and no good. Off to the left. So St. James will come away with no points here to end the second half. And with 31 seconds left, you don't want to rule out this fast moving Evangel offense. Not at all. They can move down the field so quickly. I think they scored the first series in 42 seconds. They have 31 seconds. Of course, uh, St. James is going to be in that prevent defense, I'm quite certain. But uh, they, they win the 3-4 front. First, first series, they were in a 4-3 the last few game, series. I would suspect they may go back to that 3-4. Uh, for preventative purposes and uh, because you know that uh, Evangel is going to be airing it out. Well, they're spotting the ball at the 21. Now they're moving it back to the 20. I was going to say, I don't understand why it's at the 21. When the kickoff goes into the end zone, they bring it back to the 20. So it'll be first and 10. Evangel with the ball at its own 20. 31 seconds remaining in the half. The Eagles with two timeouts. Dees stands at his own 11. He'll put Duncan Tell in motion. No one at home in the backfield with him. Everyone going out for a pass except for his five down line. The Dees Cox throws the ball into coverage, incomplete. Davis was the closest one near it. But good coverage on the play by Martin Harry and Tremaine Harrison. 26 seconds remaining in the first half. And they had, uh, they, they, St. James went back to their standard 4-3 defense, and there were six jerseys in the uh, vicinity of where that ball landed. Unfortunately, four were black jerseys, so uh, the numbers were against Philip Dees and company. 
second and 10 for these Eagles. Well, I'll tell you, with the way we started off in the first quarter, I expected a 28-27 game at halftime. Here we are, 14-13, with Evangel sporting the lead. The defenses have taken over the rest of this half. As Brooks will run it off the handoff out of the shotgun, he'll get over the 25 up to the 26. Landry making the stop. The clock will continue to run, and both teams will be satisfied to let it expire to end this first half of play. As it spins inside of 10, it's 14-13. Evangel with the lead. Evangel with a couple of touchdown tosses from Dees to Booty, and also in a Terrence Brooks four-yard touchdown run. For St. James, a Martin Harry three-yard touchdown run and a Terry LeVay eight-yard touchdown run. Welcome back to the Louisiana Superdome where the first half of this AAA matchup between Evangel and St. James has lived up to the billing. It's 14-13, Evangel over the St. James Wildcats at this juncture. And Renee, a fantastic first half. We're looking forward to the second half, but it was a lot of running and a lot of airplay as well. But the St. James ground game getting on track. The last touchdown coming on Kerry LeVay's quarterback keeper. Yes, number eight had a lot to do with the first half success. And he passed the ball and ran it in right here. Great vision for a quarterback. And he got into the end zone, broke the plane, and... and uh, that's where they arrived at 13 points. The extra point was missed, but it's 14-13 right now. But with 8-16 left in the half to make it 14-13, Terrence Brooks finding the end zone for Evangel. They do some running as well as passing. Here you'll see some fancy footwork by Mr. Brooks. And he slams into the end zone, dies, breaks the plane, and number six, Brooks, he's found that territory before in the 1996 season. That touchdown with the extra point put Evangel up on top, 14-13, but this game is far from being over. Evangel's first lead of the game as we take a look at the halftime stats some of the key stats that you'll see yeah we're pretty even Steven passing believe it or not Evangel 10 of 19 135 you expect more yardage from Philip Dees but that's what you've got at this juncture you can see the first downs Renee all knotted up at 12 apiece total yardage that's about as even as you get 215 and 231 of the stat I wanted to pass along Evangel has run 37 plays to St. James 34 plays so each team with just about the same opportunities offensively this is about an it's even a match of first half football as you'll ever find. Time of possession, T.O.P. is pretty even too, 11.43 to 12.17. This game is everything it's been billed to be, and it's been a great game, and I'll tell you, there's a lot more to be, be played here. It's a little lower scoring than I thought it would be at half, but 14-13, I'll take it. 24 minutes of football remaining as the second half is underway in the St. James kickoff into the end zone, so the Evangel offense will take it over first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. Philip Dees trotting back on the field. He'll be protected by his offensive line, Don Courtney and David Moon. On the left side, James McKeel is your center. Michael Pirro and Michael Joyner anchoring the right side. Dees at quarterback, Jeff Duncantel and Terrence Brooks, your running backs. Robert Davis, Abram Booty, your wide receivers, and Cole Pittman, your tight end when they run a tight end in this wide open offensive attack of the Evangel Eagles. Good look at senior quarterback Philip Dees, 6'2", 190. Good size for the young man to go with his rocket-like arm. Dees going into the shotgun once again from the 11. He'll roll right, stand at the 9. Now he'll come back to the near sidelines. He's got all kind of room to run, and that's what he'll do. He'll turn it up at the 25, and he'll be chased out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Checking the St. James defense, Jer Jeremy Harry and Tenelius Fleming along with Derek Elsey and Daniel Bourne across the front. Your linebacking core, Tremaine Harrison, Martin Harry and Chad Parker in your secondary. Jared Howard, Melvin Barnes, Tevis Smith, and Andrew Dennis. Second down in less than a yard for Evangel. Dees taking the snap. He'll hand it off to the first back through. That's Brooks. Brooks picks up the first down and more as he'll make it up to the 38-yard line. And that was uh, a four-man front they were running against just now with uh, Harry cheating up from his middle linebacker position nearly in, a, in the line, making it a five-man line. But Brooks found a crease, broke through for a nice gain. It was a first down, and uh, now Philip Dees and company are looking at a first down once again for their second, second play from scrimmage. 
D standing back at his own 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Eagles. Three-step drop, will toss the ball complete to Davis on the play, immediate contact. That's credited to Jared Howard of St. James. Davis close to a first down. And it is a first down for the Evangel Eagles. Pretty good matchup going on here on the right side. The right tackle, Michael Joyner, and the left defensive end, Daniel Bourne. That's quite a matchup there. Two solid players. We'll talk more about that in the next few plays. First and 10 for the Eagles as they've moved the ball quickly up to the midfield stripe, starting at their own 20, some 50 seconds ago. Deese drops back, well protected. Flare out pass, right side. Excellent throw, good catch as well. And that's Booty on the reception. And Renee, because of that deep drop that Deese takes, that's a seven yard completion, but it was actually more like a 30, 35 yard throw. Boy, he's got a deep wide pocket in and those linemen really open up the hole for him. Hits Booty. Nice tackle here, slammed by Melvin Barnes. And again, that's been a, a matchup right there. Barnes and Booty been going at it all afternoon. Second down and three. Here's a good look at Booty. Wideouts left and right. Three backs behind Deese. He's beneath center. He'll hand it off to Duncan Tell, slamming on the left hand side. Absolutely nowhere to go. Jermaine Harrison, the Sam linebacker, that senior, one of the leaders of the St. James defensive unit. Yeah, he is. He's a three-year starter, and he is the hardest hitter on this defense. When he hits you, buddy, it's like a train wreck. And, and, and he loves to really lay the, the leather to you, which he does right here. Puts his shoulder into him. Good form tackling, and, and Duncan Tell is just going down. He's, he's stopping his tracks. Good tackle by Jermaine Harrison, a 5'10", 170-pound senior. For St. James. He's his one yard for passing for a national record. He's got 161. He needs four. Check that. He needs 165, and he's got it on that pass play. And barely. So there's a good look at your new national passing leader of high school athletics in the United States, Philip Dees. More yardage than any other high school player has ever thrown for. He's done it. And he broke, one of the records he broke was Josh Booty, who once held that record. Nice out pass right here to Abram Booty, brother of Josh Booty. And Abram Booty is looking at a few schools himself. He's got it narrowed down to uh, perhaps LSU and Florida with his 4-4 speed. Averages 19 yards per catch. So he's going to be quite a catch for whoever he plays with on the next level. He's pump fake. Wide open is Davis. He'll gather it in at the 5 and waltz into the end zone. Jared Howard could not catch up. Well, boom, lightning strikes. Evangel moves down the field. We talked about it before halftime, Renee. St. James needed to pick up points. They had the opportunity. They did not pick up the points. So they went into the halftime locker room, trailing by one, knowing Evangel would have the ball to begin the second half. And Evangel quickly and smartly moves down the field to score the touchdown. And St. James will await the response with their offensive possession right around the corner. Over the outstretched hands of Jaron Howard into Robert Davis's hands. And He's seen that area before as he scored five touchdowns for Logansport last year in the single-A championship, and D sets another national record with 137 career touchdown passes. Brad Cobb kicks the extra point. It's up and good, 9.32 remaining, third quarter, 21-13. Evangel Eagles over the St. James Wildcats will be back with more right after this. Welcome back, 21-13, Evangel on top. Striking quickly, much like they did to begin the contest before the St. James defense buckled down. Some happy fans there tra tracking down from Shreveport, Louisiana. And so far, it seems like it's worth the trip. 
for the Eagle fans. Touchdown pass from Philip Dees to Robert Davis. Dees' second touchdown toss of the day. You can, you can bet that St. James is going to get back on track again with, with LeVette and company. <clears throat> they're a potent offense, and they're far from being shut down here. A lot of time left to be played, over nine and a half minutes to go here in the third stanza. And uh, once again, St. James averaging 37 points per game, so they're going to be quite a, a potent attack to, to halt here in the second half. Of course, St. James here just a couple of years ago, back in 1994, leaving a 28-21 loss to a meet in the AAA state championship game. And the Wildcats' last title coming back in 1979. That's when they were coached by James Wagesback, who now coaches at Cecilia. Cecilia, of course, the defending 3A state champs, at least for another quarter and a half. They defeated Carr in this building last year in Cecilia not making it to the finals this year, obviously. And actually, last year, Cecilia ending the Evangel season for the first time ever, short of the state finals, with a 31-28 loss, uh, actually a 21-38 win over St. James in the semifinals. You notice both these teams start off like a house of fire in the first couple of series, and, and things have slowed down. Uh, both teams have made some e defensive adjustments uh, to counteract some of the teams, some of the things the other team was doing offensively. So uh, it, this has slowed down the pace a little bit. Both teams scoring in their first couple of possessions. It looked like this was going to be light up the scoreboard, but it's slowed down just a wee bit. The lay down on the field as the officials are talking about something. We don't quite know what. Both teams are out on the field prepared to kick off. You know it's not a TV timeout. As they are slow to get things started. Each team 14-0 coming into this game. One team will leave 15-0 and stay champion. Evangel averaging 526 yards of offense on the ground. And St. James, no slouch as well as the wing tee bunch for Rick Gailey. He's averaging 360 yards. Now we're set to go. Cobbs puts his foot to the ball. Keller will take it from his own three. They get across the 20 up to the 23-yard line. A 20-yard return for Alex Keller. And out will trot Kerry LeVay and the rest of the St. James offense. Keller broke through the first wave and had an opportunity to, to, to punch it up a little bit further get uh, St. James in pretty good field position. They start this drive at their own 23-yard line, trailing by eight points with 9.27 remaining here in the third stanza. Here comes Lovett and company, and he's been pretty sharp this, this outing thus far. Six out of 13 passes he's had, and outstanding decision. Dabney, the ball carrier, who could chop down short of the 29 up to about the 28-yard line. We look at that St. James offensive line. Oliver Hooker and Rydell Harry anchor the left side. Albert Myler, your man in the middle, middle at the center position, and Alfred Grant along with Avery Love on the right side. Kerry Lovett, your quarterback. Alex Keller and Trevor Charles, the two halfbacks, split in as Jance Napoleon. Terrence Landry also in the mix there, and Derek Elsey. I got Dabney. Dabney, the fullback. Charles sweeping on the left-hand side. He'll break a tackle at the 35, continue his way up the field at the 40, and pick up the first down. Good hard running by Trevor Charles of 12 yards. He was halted by Robert Davis. Good tackle, good open field tackle. Checking that Evangel defensive lineup. Brian Dawson, Cole Pittman, Tyler Satterwaite, Kurt Coleman anchor the front lineup. Justin Coggins, Radula Wilson, Marco Coley and Matt Powell, the linebackers. Jelani Lewis, Philip Geiger, and Brad Cobb in the secondary. First and 10, St. James at the 40-yard line. LeVay beneath center. Charles in motion. Handoff, slashing. Keller across the 40, get up to maybe the 41, where 
Byron Dawson makes the stop. Byron Dawson, what a prospect he's going to be for 1997. 6'2", 3'15". Bench presses over 400 pounds, an all-district performer this year. And if you know anything about weightlifting, Gerald, he bench, he inclined bench presses 265 with eight reps. He's only a junior. will be back 6'2", 315. You'll hear his name on the blue chip list for 97. Second down and eight. I think he'd be happy to make a lot of folks blue chip list this year. He'd be happy to take him as a junior. Levette wants the pass, stands in the pocket, tosses it complete for Charles. Look out, he's down to the 40-yard line. First down, Wildcats. Philip Geiger finally drags down Charles, but not before Trevor eludes. Catching the pass from Levette for a 15-yard completion and a first down. Check that, an 18-yard completion and a first down down in Evangel territory. Not an easy catch, not an easy throw. He threads the needle right here, winds up, good baseball throw right here, reaches back by his ankle, pulls it in in a host of white shirts and, and Geiger makes the stop but not before Charles picks up a much needed first down for the Wildcats. 7-17 remaining third quarter clock rolling 21-13 Evangel. Handoff to Abby, balls loose bounded around the 30, Geiger recovers it for Evangel. A fortunatus bounce for the Eagles as it skips right to Geiger out of the hands of Dabney. And Geiger comes up with a, a fumble recovery for Evangel, and he really turned the game around against Independence with his outstanding play and shows a lot of maturity for a freshman as Dabney just lost control of the ball as he was hit, torn away by, uh, by Bry Byron Dawson. And Philip Geiger just cradles the ball, holds on to it. The offense takes over for the, for the Eagles, and, uh, and Philip Dees cocks his rifle ready right to fire. Tiger with an interception in the first half, so he's got both turnovers in this game. An interception and a fumble recovery. Both charged to St. James. Deese drops back to retreat to his 19. Feel some pressure, he'll run up. Still with plenty of time, more pressure, sack drop. Back at the 24-yard line, Terrence Landry draws the bead and finally hauls down Philip Deese. And credit the secondary as well, Renee. He really had good downfield coverage to allow the pressure to finally get to Dees. That was a secondary sack, is right, Gerald. And great pressure coming from Landry and Bourne, and he just had nowhere to throw, and finally the pocket just collapsed on him. And you can see right there Landry, who's only a junior. You'll hear his name next year in the blue chip list. 6'3", 231 from his right defensive end, uh, sacks Dees for the second time. Second down in 18. Dees stands back at his own 15. Low snap in the shotgun. He'll set, complete the dunk and tell. He'll make the move at the 25. Take it up to the 30, he'll be driven out of bounds. He'll be short of the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third down and 10. Harrison coming up to make the stop of Duncan Till. And Duncan Till with 149 grabs. We mentioned he's a career leading rusher uh, at Evangel High School. Takes in this pass from Dees, knows what to do with it. Good footwork here. Duncan Tell with 4'6 speed, only 155, slams into Tremaine Harrison and uh, holds his own against a much bigger Harrison. Third down on nine, third down and nine on closer inspection. As Duncan Tell did make the original line of scrimmage and one more, he's in motion. Left to right, he stands at his own 20, he'll throw it to Duncan Tell on the other side and it's incomplete, Duncan Tell one hopped it. Tried to scoop it up and uh, didn't think the officials saw it, but he did. And Incomplete pass, these heads for the sidelines as his punter has to turn it over to the Wildcat offense. Good look at it right here. Well, it appears on that angle that that is that certainly does look like a catch. But he was right, he was down right there. So regardless, incomplete well, or otherwise. Right, you are right, Renee, with his knee down right there. He should have been down. It should have been a complete ball, and he was down right there. But the official was shielded by it with his back. At any rate, it would not have been first down. So it remains fourth down. Cobb into punt. He gets a high sailing kick back. That Keller will let it bounce. It'll take a St. James bounce. He'll be down on the 25-yard kick. 5.54 remaining third quarter, 21-13. Evangel over St. James. 
so each time Evangel's come up with a turnover. Geiger with an interception in the first half. Geiger a fumble recovery in the second. The Evangel offense stalls and punts each time. Rick coach Rick Gailey shouting instructions for the Delaware wing tee to quarterback Kerry Lovette and uh, brings his troops up to the line of scrimmage. Lovette, I think he'll, you may see him get more involved in his option this second series here. Charles sweeping left, got some daylight, nice seal block there as he'll turn the corner and get pushed out right at midfield. Charles really with great leg strength, he's tough one-on-one -on -one as he's shown you. He's doesn't get brought down too often by a one-on-one -on -one situation or either first tackler. He usually lose the first tackler. Uh, 576 yards rushing, six touchdowns on the season. He's averaging four yards per tote, eight carries, 32 yards thus far for the championship game here this evening. Second down and three. Napoleon. Is the wide out on the right hand side. Slot left. That's where the tight end is as well. Motion left to right. And up Dabney. Big hole. Crashing down to the 41. First down. St. James. Marco Coley finally making the stop. But not before. The big fullback. 5'11, 211 pound senior. Lydell Dabney. Coming to this game. 855 yards and 17 touchdowns on the ground. Big hole open right there. You see Elsie blocking down, and a hole open by Avery Luffs, 5'9", 301, and Alfred Grant, 5'9", 276, kind of low to the ground, but a lot of beef up front, as we alluded to in the Wildcat attack up front. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Javette, counter, inside, Dabney again. The official will take, take a spill as well. He's okay. He pops up, Dabney inside to 30. And that shows a little bit, Renee, about Rick Gailey's philosophy. Dabney fumbling on the previous series for St. James, and he's going to him right here, showing some confidence in the senior, the guy that, one of the guys that brung him here to the Superdome. Good block of the zebra right there as he takes the tumble. The vet calls his troops up. They're in a drive right now, need to get some points, need to produce some points with just under five minutes remaining here in the third quarter, Joe. Levette for Dabney again, why not? It's working, big hole inside the 25, fighting forward down to the 21. First down, Wildcats. Robert Davis, who's seen some time on defense on this series, Renee making the stop, but Lydell Dabney, big holes. He's finding them on this drive, and he punctures the 21, and statistically will be down at the 20. He's going to make someone a fine fullback in college. 5'11", 216, just will not be denied. First tackler just, just brushes him off and slams into the smaller defensive backs, and you're not going to bring this guy down one-on-one. -on -one. Nine carries and 55 yards to pull the back. That reminds some of Rory Weber, the fullback from St. James. Similar movement in the open field. Motion left to right. Levette drops back in the pocket, tosses the ball complete to Charles. He'll try to make a move at the 15 and not get out of the grasp of Davis. It'll be spotted down as forward progress will be spotted down at the 15. Pick up of five. Trevor Charles pulling in his grab, another grab uh, for the season. And, and Levette just has him methodically going down the field here on second down and, and about five yards to go. Nice throw here, a nice out throw. Tough catch to make. These, these running backs are excellent receivers for the Wildcats. He's got three grabs for 40 yards thus far on the contest. Second and five. Charles is in the slot on the right-hand side. Wide out left, motion left to right. Hand off to the motion back. That's Keller. Crashing the 10, down to the five, into the end zone for the touchdown. And the St. James sideline erupts. He dragged Brad Cobb the last five yards of the run as Alex Keller would not be denied the end zone. He, he went through three would-be tacklers en route to the end zone, Gerald. That's 106 on the day for Alex Keller on that run, Renee. And I'm quite certain they're going to go for two points. Nice run right here. Good blocking down up the field. Look you can see Charles Harry. making a nice block. Absolutely. Yeah. And nice blocking as, as Alex Keller gets into the end zone and 
What a nice, what a Spartan he is. I tell you what, he's just the best football player they have. Nice block, look at this. Harry down downfield along with Alfred Grant. And I tell you what, there's a lot of beef, but he can move down and down the field. Two point conversion. LeVay wants to pass, he can run it or throw it, he'll run it into the end zone, he gets in there. We've got a tie ball game. Wow, 325 remaining in the third quarter. Matt Powell could not catch quarterback Kerry LeVay. He runs it in for two, and we've got excitement here in the Superdome. And it's definitely some electricity, just as the St. James crowd comes to life, and boy, they've got a, a, uh, a following here from up the river, and I tell you what, this is going to be a barn burner. This is long way from over, 325 remaining. LeVette just showing some great athleticism. He's got Elsie in the end zone, but he takes it in himself just out of the outstretched hands of Justin Coggins in for the two-point conversion, 21-all. What a game. It's everything it is built to be. That last drive, Renee, six plays, 57 yards, taking 236 off the clock, capped by an Alex Keller 15-yard run, giving Keller 106 for the game on the ground. It's going to be tough to call a most valuable player for this game. I think whoever scores the last point will probably seal it up. Well, we talked about it at halftime, how statistically how close the game was, plays run, time of possession, total offense, first downs. It was close at halftime, and it's close now, almost through three quarters of play. What excitement. I, I tell you what, there's, there's not much many things more exciting than the high school state championships right here in the Gatorade Classic, and I just look forward to doing this. And it, what, a, what a great game this has been. Each team coming out, giving the other one the best shot. Evangelo, one-point lead. They come out to start the second half on an 80-yard drive. They go up 21-13. St. James fumbles on the next possession, then holds Evangel to a punt, and then the Wildcats come back with that touchdown drive. 21-all. Davis from his own one. Watch Davis. He's brought back six for touchdowns this year. But it won't be seven on this one right here as the Wildcat defense will converge and stopping at the 16. Well, he did break loose from the initial coverage there. But watch out. When he gets it, he's electricity. He can really, really break it deep and hurt you. Robert Davis. And here comes Philip Dees once again. We're talking about Michael Joyner, the right tackle. He's done a great job affording that, that all the time to Philip Dees. He's a 6'5", 275-pound right tackle, all district, all parish, all city. He's being looked at closely by Northeast Louisiana, Northwestern, Texas A&M, Memphis, Louisiana Tech, and Magnese. He's one of the fine prospects, and he's done an outstanding job in the front five protecting Dees, keeping his jersey clean this evening. He's had a couple of sacks, but for most of the evening, he's had a lot of time. The St. James crowd getting into it. Dees will stand back at his own eight-yard line, take the snap, retreat to the four, whistles will stop the play. Good look at Dennis Dunn. The hit skipper for Evangel. Delay a game, the call against Evangel. Possibly the noise, Renee. That's only their second penalty. Ball now. Delay a game against the offense. First down. They had a motion call in the first half and now this delay a game here in the second half so it'll be first and 15 back at the 11. they haven't been this much electricity in this stadium in quite a while he's calling for the ball it's snapped to the up back he's got the ball and running up that's lewis he'll cross the 15 up to the 16 and not fooling st james lewis will pick up five maybe six yes he will pick up six Terrence Landry making the stop. Just getting past the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be second down and nine. Jelani Lewis, he'll kill you with that speed. He's got four or five speeds, not even the fastest on offense, but he's a combination of wide receiver running back and gets the most out of his athletic abilities. Booty motion, low snap, D scoops it, sets, tosses, low toss, reception is made. That's Lewis on the reception. He is close to a first down. That'll quiet this St. James crowd. Well, he runs one, and then he catches one, so he can do it all, and Philip Dees puts it kind of low, kind of tough to catch. 
but Lewis coming back for the ball, as a good receiver will do, Renee, going where the ball is. Yeah, he came down to his knees and cradled the ball. He was uh, pretty wide open, and Dees just had to deliver the ball quickly. He was getting the heat from the St. James front four. And it is a first down for Evangel. First and 10, Eagles at their own 26-yard line. Single wide out left and right. Three backs behind Deese. Who will hand it to Duncan Kell, sweeping near side. They make the cut at the 30. It tripped up at the 33 by Tremaine Harrison. And a three-year starter, Harrison, ankle tackles Duncan Tell and before he gets started, because I tell you, if he gets past Harrison, he may be clear sailing right here. One tackle here, had he gotten past one more, he could have been on for a long, long run and shoot up some real estate. At any rate, he's credited for six. Second, and a short four, or a long three. Deese wants the pass. Three-step drop, does. Complete on the play right up at the 40-yard line. That's Corey Berlin making the catch. The junior with his first catch of the day. That's good enough for a first down. With these smallest receivers, Gerald, they remind me of a, a former Houston Oilers attack or Atlanta Falcons or whatever it may be, but kind of small little mites, you know, guys that are just tough to catch and a lot of speed, possess a lot of speed, and, you know, speed kills, and these guys have the weapon. Clock rolling, 122, remaining third quarter, all knotted at 21 in this AAA state championship game. Deese beneath center. St. James showing blitz, cheating up. Here they come. Deese wants it all, going to Booty deep. He's open, receiving the ball at the 20, makes a move at the 10, 5, touchdown. Abram Booty, a 60-yard touchdown pass from Deese to Booty. And that's touchdown pass, 138 on his career, and touchdown catch, 83 for Adam Booty. And tell you what, these guys continue to pile up some expressive numbers on a national level. And, uh, Dees has far surpassed the national record for yardage completed in the career. Well, you can tell Booty knows what to do with that ball. It's in the air. He knows what to do, how to catch it. Then he knows what to do. Watch the move right here. Good move, and he's got the speed. He explodes out of that stop, hits the brakes, and explodes. And with that 6-3 frame and a 4-4 speed, he's tough to maneuver. He's tough to guard. Cobb in for the extra point attempt. Kick is up and good. 103 remaining, third quarter, 28-21. Evangel over St. James in this AAA shootout here from the Superdome. We'll be back with St. James's response after this. The brand. In the West, it's the way a man marks what's his. We're the beef people, and our WD brand is on every steak we sell. It means our U.S. choice beef has been specially aged and trimmed to ensure more flavor, more tender, juicy beef. WD brand, the mark of quality from Winn-Dixie. The beef people. Emmett Smith of Dallas. Don Cornelius, I come to ask you a favor. It's time for me to make a movie. What kind? The kind where I take on the bad guys. What's some heads. Oh, a documentary? Yeah, the Emmett Zone. Whatever. Take the oath. This is my plan. Yeah. That's one bad brother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about it. Another look at the touchdown toss, Renee. He, does, he runs a streak route right here. Stop, puts the brakes on, cuts back, and there's really not much Melvin Barnes can do. He got burned on this one, but it's been a pretty, pretty evenly matched contest between Barnes and Booty. And Philip Dees just shows his appreciation for a touchdown pass, 138 on his career. Keller with the kickoff, crossing the 25 up to the 30, up to the 32-yard line. A 24-yard return. The updated numbers, Booty 18 of, uh, D's, excuse me, 18 of 28, 290 yards, three touchdown tosses, one to Davis, two to Booty. Booty's had seven catches, 158 yards in those two scores. 
So James, St. James will have it on offense with 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They're down by a score, 28-27. They'll start it off at their own 32. I think both these teams are going to be represented on Sunday afternoons in the foreseeable future with the talent these guys have. Certainly on Saturday afternoons. That's a foregone conclusion. Dabney is straight ahead, not much running room as they bury his head. And get back to the original line of scrimmage. And the faithful from Evangel celebrate the touchdown, and, and now Evangel takes a 28-21 lead with just ticks away, 39 ticks away before the end of the third quarter, but we got a, a whole 12 minutes to go, Gerald. A lot of football yet to be played. Second down and eight. Is that last running play credited for two yards, moving a little bit, a little further downfield than I first judged. Yvette beneath center. Fake to the motion, man. He'll pass. Now he'll run wide open. Plenty of green field. He'll cut it back at the 40 and get dropped right around the first down marker. He did pick it up. It appears Justin Coggins, the leading tackler on this Eagle defensive team, making the stop. And as I mentioned. It is a first down. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Jerry. As I mentioned before, LeVette, you can bet he's going to get more involved in, a running, in this running attack. You got the, the weapons with Dabney and, 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 and Charles and Keller, but he just brings a little different dimension because he freezes that defense when he, when he gets outside the, uh, the contain right here, and he can throw a pass even on a rollout. So a great run, a great decision by LeVette. Third quarter has come to a close, 28-21. Eagles over the Wildcats here in this Triple-A state championship game. National studies show that students who participate in high school activities, like music, sports, and drama, not only have better grades and attendance, they develop the character to handle adversity, the grace to accept defeat, and the self-confidence to start over. Welcome back. Total yardage at this juncture. Evangel, 401 yards of total offense. St. James, 331 yards. St. James operates with the ball at its own 43-yard line. Good look at the Wildcat cheerleaders. They are part of this program. That, the thing that Rick Gailey credits with the total community involvement and, the, and really the crowd gets behind this, and that certainly means wins, and you can see the support. It's pretty evident here in the Superdome for the championship game. The experience is watching a St. James game at home. First and 10 for LeVette and company. Keller sweeping right, big hole, look out. He's at the 50, cutting back at the 40. It's a foot race on the far sidelines. He's finally dragged down at the 13-yard line. Brad Cobb, the free safety, makes a touchdown saving tackle of Alex Keller on a 41-yard touchdown run, a 40-yard, 41-yard run, excuse me. And you remember back in the first half, he had a 51-yard, 51-yard run. I'll spit it out here to set up a St. James score. And Cobb. The all-district uh, free safety brought him down, and boy, I tell you what, <clears throat> Alex Keller has really earned his keep today. He's a, I tell you, he's a, a hard hat, pale worker. He comes to comes to play every game, every practice, and really lays it on the line. And you can see he's pretty well spent right now. But he's the best all-around player for St. Charles, for St. James. First in ten, Wildcats from the 17-yard line. Dabney fumbles the ball. It's loose on the carpet. St. James appears to have come up with it again. Evangel thinks they have it, but it appears there was a St. James player on the bottom of the pile. We'll see as they unstack them. No signal yet from the official. As they discuss it, and St. James retains possession. Wow. They really jumped over a snake that time and dodged a bullet. Credit Trevor Charles with the fumble recovery, Renee. Let's look at it right here. Wow. Radula Wilson with a shot right there. And Trevor Charles just takes it away from Radula Wilson. And that might be the play of the game right there. If they score points on this, 
and that was an exciting and very important play. Hit from behind, and damn, he just pops it loose. It was Wilson's to take, and Keller was right there and took it from him. And Radula Wilson certainly had possession of it until Trevor Charles took it away from him. 11-23, clock rolling in this ball game. 28-21, Evangel. St. James with the ball. Keller sweeping right, nowhere to go. Hog tied in the backfield and dropped. Justin Coggins with the stop. And Coggins is a guy, he covers the field well. He's an all-district, all-parish performer, and a leading tackler, and he shoots the gap from his outside linebacker position. They call him strong safety. Right here, shooting the gap, coming right through, coming clean and, and making the stop. And, He's another guy, when he when he hits the ball carry, it's like a bad train wreck. He really, really puts the, puts the wood to you. 5'9", 190, a senior for Evangel. This is St. James' first third down conversion of this half. It's a healthy one, third and 12 from the 18-yard line of Evangel. Levette wants the pass, stands in the pocket, tosses it downfield, no flag. Incomplete right around the two. Philip Geiger was there closing in on Trevor Charles. And on fourth and 12, it would appear St. James would go for it after missing a field goal to end the first half. Well, yeah, and here you see Levette rolling out, stopping, planning, throwing. Tough throw right here. And wow, I tell you what, there was some minor contact, but there was some contact and uh, throwing the outside of, of Charles and Stop, the catch couldn't be made, but they're going to go for it. At least they're going to call a timeout and talk about it. Timeout, Wildcats. 10-31 really into the game. Evangel up 28-21. And Rick Gailey facing a fourth down decision. Renee, a couple of years ago against the meet. He went for it, didn't make it. It changed the momentum of the game. And this is what he had to say about potentially going for it on fourth down against Evangel. Uh, only every day. Uh, every day all year. Uh, and it's, it's not... And it's not because of whether we should have or shouldn't have. Because if it's uh, if we're in the middle of the fourth quarter and and the score is tied and we have fourth and a foot our own forty, we're going for it. Uh, there's absolutely no question. We're going to be very proactive in trying to win the game and not to, to, to back up and play uh, play soft. Uh, I just hope that I'll call a better play because uh, the flaw uh, two years ago wasn't the fact that we went for it, but the fact we could have called a better play. And that play did not work out as the pass from Levette was incomplete into the end zone. And so the ball will go over on downs, first and 10 for Evangel. They've got the clock on their side at 10.25 left in the game and the lead, 28-21. Now the pressure's on the defense because if, if St. James can hold the high-powered Evangel offense right now, they can get the ball back with another opportunity. But... Uh, the way this Evangel offense can spread that field and shorten the field so quickly. That's Brooks running on the far sideline. He'll take the turn at the 28 and get up to the 30. Well, after each team had a couple of touchdowns here, Renee answering each other with touchdown plays. And Alex Keller, 15-yard score for St. James in a Booty reception from Dees for 60 yards. Give Evangel the lead. St. James runs out of downs. Deep in Evangel territory. Much the same way that Evangel ran out of downs twice in the first half against the St. James defense. First and 10, Eagles from their own 31. Handoff on the inside. That's Brooks, he'll get up to the 34. Martin Harry making the stop. And they allow Philip D some opportunity. He can check off. He calls 60% of his plays. And, uh, you know, they just allow him so many opportunities. He's such a mature quarterback. Good look at Rick Gailey right there. They're going to get the ball back and with another opportunity. Dees steps up. He'll run. He's at the 35, trying to get outside. He does. Now he's at the 40 and slips as he makes the pivot and flags on the play. Chad Jasmine making the stop of these as he made the cut. Well, what happened here is, is Dees saw a crease and he just took off in between the rush. And he slid in. Is there a, a clip? Yes. Clipping is the call on the play. 
right there. Jasmine clipped from the back by Booty. What so else? that'll bring the ball back and negate a first down pickup by Evangel. Whatever the call would have been would have been somewhat questionable because it wasn't a real solid clip and it wasn't a tough Personal tackle, foul. so whoever they called it on was somewhat questionable. It wasn't a tough hit and I don't know where the clip came from. They have pushed him from the back. They have anticipated that, but tough call to make, and the call was made. So it'll be second down in 14. Evangel with the ball at its own 27. Deese resetting Davis on the far side at the top of your screen. That's Booty in motion. He'll run over to where Deese is. Booty will drop back, feel the pressure, step up in the pocket, release the ball. Is it complete? Yes, it is to Lewis. Up at the 37-yard line. Still short of the first down. The markers will switch over to third, so a pivotal play here for St. James as they're trying to hold the Evangel. Booty now over the 300-yard mark passing. Excuse me, Deese over the 300-yard mark passing. Third down and four. Booty in motion. Dees waiting for the snap. He'll retreat, survey the field, fire the ball, open his booty, reception made, first down achieved. Up at the 49-yard line of the Eagles. Jasmine finally running him out of bounds. You know, Abram Booty, that's a good look at Abram Booty right there. He's three national records, most catches in a career, 293 coming into this game, most yards, 56-86, and most touchdowns, 81. But he's got a couple, he's got a pair of those in this game. But he's added to all those records every time he makes a catch. He reminds the people at Evangel a lot of the former Louisiana Tech and Baltimore Colt wide receiver, Roger Carr. Deese in the shotgun. Counter to the near side, that's Lewis. Stiffly met and driven down by Jasmine. But not before Lewis picks up close to five yards. You know, he, I'm sure he's thinking right now, who left the bicycle in the driveway in the dark? He didn't see that tackle coming from the sidelines. And watch this. He didn't see, he didn't see him coming. He's looking down Looking field. one way and look out, bang. Someone left the bicycle in the driveway and he went right over it. Second and five. Deese in the shotgun. Stands at his own 46. He'll retreat. Step up. Toss the ball wide open. Duncan Tell down to the 20-yard line goes Duncan Tell. A 26-yard completion from Deese to Duncan Tell. Dennis making the stop. And he put it right where it needed to be. And Duncan Tell, not only can he run, he can catch the ball. And he's got a host of colleges looking at him. Right, good throw, good follow through, good release. Right in the hands of Duncan Tell. Lost his balance. Could have, could have still been running, but uh, a nice completion for 26 yards first down. Clock running, eight minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Evangel up, 28-21. Dees beneath center. Duncan Tell sweeping left inside the 20, down to the 19, pickup of one, maybe two. Fleming and Parker making the stop. And that's Terrence Landry once again making the stop. He's a hard, hard worker, good size, great potential. He's a 6'3", 231 junior, Gerald. He'll fill out to 250 or so next year, and he'll be in a 260 range by the time he takes off for, for uh, a 1A one, uh, one college. He's standing in the shotgun. The clock is biggest ally at this point. Low snap, he'll roll right, set up the screen. Now he'll go deep, looking in the end zone, overthrowing Lewis. Fine coverage on the play by Jared Howard. He had a better shot at the ball than Lewis did. So it'll remain third down. Well, Lewis just quit running, and, and Howard took it as far as he could take it and, and nearly intercepted the ball. But you see Dees getting some instruction from the offensive staff. And boy, what a staff they have. Dees rolling right. Throwing across the bow, great delivery. Perfect spiral. And once again, he anticipated 
Lewis is continuing running, which he did not. Third down and 10. Three-step drop, tosses the ball incomplete. That was a rare poor throw by Dees. Delani Lewis was cutting up the field, and, and Dees just threw behind him, anticipated, I guess, a, a stop pattern, a stop and go, perhaps. But Dees just stopped it. It was a timing pattern. He was throwing to a spot and anticipated Lewis being there, and I guess they just miscommunication on someone's part. Cobb checking in. He'll attempt the field goal of 37 yards. And Gerald, he's kicked a 62-yard field goal in practice. He's got the leg strength. Snap is back. Ball is down. Blocked. Jeremy Harry pouring through for the block. And that's a big stop for St. James as it remains a seven-point difference and not ten. Jeremy Harry with the great block, the sophomore, brother of Rydell, and you can see him coming through, and I tell you what, he's definitely, Cobb has the leg strength. It took off pretty good, but Harry came bolting through from his defensive tackle position, and uh, they're lucky that Jared Howard didn't scoop it up and, and run in, into the end zone, but uh, St. James did dodge a bullet, have the ball at their own 34-yard line, and now with under seven, seven minutes to go, have another opportunity. Lovett gives it to Charles, sweeping near side. Look out, he crosses the 30, across the 40, up to the 43-yard line. Brad Cobb finally escorts him out of bounds. How important was that block field goal, Renee? Well, Evangel held on to the ball for six minutes and 37 seconds on that last drive. They took it over at 10.25 of the third quarter at their own 18, driving it all the way down into St. James territory, and they came away with no points. And now St. James has an opportunity with plenty of time on the clock and two timeouts. 6.52, as a matter of fact, on the clock. They trail by 7, 28-21. Evangel over St. James. The game is far from being over. You said it. Levesque hands off to Dabney. He'll jump over one would-be tackler, puncture the 50, and make it down into Eagle territory at the 44. Jelani Lewis finally makes the stop. And I tell you what, that Dabney can dance, can he? He picks him up, and he's got some uh, swift feet. He really picked him up, showed some, uh, they say he's a 4'8", 40 guy, but he's got a little quicker feet than that on his 5'11", 216-pound frame. Just bounced it outside and did an outstanding job running in the open field. Well, we've had just about everything you can ask for. Seven touchdowns, a fake punt, a couple of downs that teams have run out of, a missed field goal, a blocked field goal, a fumble, an interception. Record setting passing performances, outstanding rushing performances. Charles sweeping on the near side. Make it down to the 41 yard line. Radula Wilson on the stop, and this is the St. James ground game that we became accustomed to, Renee, in the first half. We're seeing it again here in the fourth quarter. They're ripping off chunks of four and five yards, sometimes more in each carry. Well, you know, Jance Napoleon's been silent. You can look for him pretty soon. He's been pretty silent in this offense to pass uh, most recently, and you can see him getting more involved here, so I can see him dialing number 35, Jance Napoleon, pretty soon here. Napoleon split out on the top of your screen. LeVay will look his way. Toss the ball to Napoleon, and he receives it. Well, Renee dialed the psychic hotline and came up with that one. As the pass play good down to the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for St. James. Well, you know, you ha they have to open it up. It's really not that hard to figure out. They have to open it up. You can't run, run, run at the same time. And Napoleon has been very silent. He's been splitting out. He's been running his routes. And, and this was the perfect time to throw to Napoleon. So this was uh, a great offensive play. Well executed. First and 10, Wildcats. Napoleon now split out on the left-hand side. There's another good look at it. He was coming out of the formation on the right-hand side. Now the strength of the formation to the left. And off counter, Dabney inside. Can't shake the first tackler. He'll be dropped short of the 25 at about the 26. 
They're going to pound it up the middle with that beef. And once again, an offensive line, Gerald, that averages over 250 pounds, especially in the middle, where you got Avery Love, a 301-pound right tackle, Grant 276 on the right side. And another good look there at, at Levette. 5-12 to go, clock ticking away, 28-21, and this game is going to come down to the final moment you can bet. Levette, three-step drop by the blitz, tosses to Napoleon, wide open. He's got some running room inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line, rolls the senior split end. Radula Wilson stops him after a 19-yard gain and saves the touchdown. Well, Jance Napoleon, once again, we were talking about it. He's getting more involved in the offense. He's been quiet since the first quarter, but he's too potent a weapon to just leave alone for too long and now they're becoming more it's going to kind of spread that defense a little bit they become more aware of Jans Napoleon it's going to open up the running it goes hand in hand that Delaware wing team Rick Gailey really really has a great offensive game plan mapped out here and Napoleon now has over 104 yards receiving for the game each team with 22 first downs. Dabney powering forward, breaking the five, down to the four. It'll be just short of the first down, uh, just short of the goal line. It'll be second and goal. Well, you can't say Evangel's familiar with this situation. Clock winding down, 423 remaining in the game. They hold a seven-point advantage. Their closest game all season came against 5A Shaw in the third playing day. They won that game by 10, 30 to 20. That was by far their closest game. It was a 10-point win. Here, St. James is threatening to tie this game up with less than four minutes remaining. Well, you know, Rick Gailey went for it in fourth down last time down here. Didn't make it. Turned it over to the defense. They blocked that field goal. Gave the offense confidence. This team works together like hand and glove. Dabney straight ahead. Touchdown. No signal as of yet. Now there's a signal from the officials. Dabney straight through for the touchdown. And he just powered his way in there. Dabney, the senior, just powered his way in, and he's pretty unstoppable. Boy, he's got a nose for the end zone, and he smelled it, and it's just tough to stop. Just straight ahead running, squares his shoulders. Look at this, good leg drive, good leg drive. Just got it to the end zone, and once he gets near that end zone, buddy, you're not going to stop him. Well, it appears that St. James is going to go for two. This could be the game right here. Rick, Rick Gailey, the riverboat gambler, and he's going to go for it. He's got 350, but I tell you, he's got confidence in that defense, so... Let me try two points, turn over to my defense, and we'll see what we can do here. Remember, St. James missed an extra point in the first quarter. Lovett will hand the ball off to Keller. He appeared to want to have thrown it. He had nowhere to go. Snowed under and stopped. The two-point conversion is no good. The entire Eagle defensive line was in his face. 350 remaining in the game. Evangel up by one point over the St. James Wildcats, 28 to 27. That's OK. Rick Gailey says, we're going to get it back. Don't worry about it. But you have to think, at this point, missing a field goal, missing an extra point, that St. James is going to have to stick it in the end zone and not rely on a field goal opportunity. So they're going to have to stop Evangel quickly and get the ball back and move down the field. This is gut check time, and 3.50 to go in 3 minutes and 50 seconds. There's going to be a definitive state champion. It will, it will not be a tie. Now, you can bet on that unless something un unforeseen happens. Of course, I shouldn't say that now. A lot can happen between now and in three minutes and 50 seconds. But uh, in all likelihood, this is going to be, this is going to come down to the final series. Whoever has the ball last, uh, they'll win this game. Well, Evangel will have it now. They've got three timeouts, 350 with which to work. We came out 14-13. Here to begin this second half, Philip Dees hooking up with Robert Davis for a long touchdown reception. Captain the seventh play, 80-yard drive. That gave Evangel a 21-13 lead. And it looks like Evangel is anticipating a short kick on sides, if you will. Because everyone is up and the only one is back is Duncan Tell. And Alex Keller, 15-yard touchdown run, tied it at 21. Then a booty to D, 60-yard touchdown, made it 28-21. Then this Lydell Dabney touchdown run, made it 28-27. Then this missed two-point conversion right here. With Kurt, Kurt Coleman and company just collapsed on him and prevented him from getting the ball back and throwing a pass. He was trying to get a pass over to Kerry Lovett or another eligible receiver and just couldn't do it. So 
Evangel anticipating a short kick. 28-27. Evangel with the lead. Here's the kickoff. And it is being kicked away. Duncan Bell from the 10. Running far sideline. Dropped short of the 20. Well, it's up to the black defense against the white offense. Who's going to get it? The black and gold of St. James and the red, blue, and white of Evangel. Good look at Chad Jasmine there who made a good special teams play. 3.44 to go, 28-27. And, Gerald, this has been a barn burner. Well, Rick Gailey showing he's not afraid to gamble when he gets here to the Dome. Hey, it, uh, it says something who didn't follow the, uh, who didn't play by the book and tears a little bit off course. And Rick Gailey, he got here because he's, he's got confidence in his players. Deese in the shotgun. Snap, handoff, Brooks running, puncturing the 20, and he'll make it up to the 25. He was momentarily tied up in the backfield and then came out to be credited for a five-yard gain. Fleming making the stop. You see the clock rolling. Evangel with a full complement of timeout. St. James with two. All 35-year-old, all 35 years of Dennis Dunn, he's probably aging there quickly on the sidelines, watching his clock tick down. Rick Gailey's been here before. Deese. Hands off on the inside to Davis. Nowhere to go. He's corralled by Martin Harry, and, and now it's a third down situation. And uh, a big third down situation. It's a very big third down situation. Once again, Rick Gailey throws it over to his defense. And I tell you, he's got a lot of confidence in that defense. But that's why he can take the gambles he does on offense. Third and four. So do you pass the ball, your evangel? In all likelihood, they are, yes. Evangel, four of 10 on third down conversions. Wide outs left and right. Three backs in the backfield behind Geese, no tight end. Three step drop, he will pass. Tosses the ball, complete, and a first down. Up to the 35 yard line, staying in bounds, and the clock will continue to run. That's, that's a safe Lewis. pass. That's a safe pattern. That's, that's the kind of pass they, uh, the timing pattern, an out pattern, square out, and that's the kind of pass pattern that's, that's, that's pretty safe to to run and that's what they did and got the first down 225 to go well say james will need to get a good stop here and then start burning its timeouts and these just burns it right here throws it low a hard ball where a jared howard couldn't couldn't make a defensive play here and the, for the first down catch these beneath center He'll hand the ball off to Duncan Bell. He'll sweep around the left-hand side and get pushed out of bounds. Not where he wanted to go. Chad Jasmine escorting him there, but a nice pickup on first down for Duncan Bell. Importantly, a pickup of almost eight yards. The clock will stop, but Evangel churning closer to get another first down. He's handing the ball if to Duncan Bell. Good movement. You can see why he's the career-leading rusher. He's brought down rudely by Jasmine. That uh, Duncan tells a tough little, tough little cookie there. Only 155 pounds, but he'll be a wide receiver in college. Straight ahead is Brooks. First down, up to the 49-yard line. So Evangel, needing at least one first down, has picked up two. And now, if St. James should stop Evangel, they would receive a punt deep in their own territory and have the majority of the field with which to work against as the clock will continue to spin inside two minutes. You see the faithful there for, for Evangel just counting those seconds, hoping the clock ticks down to 3-0 so they can go away with another state title. St. James stacking everybody up in the box. These will pass. Looking deep, going for the juggler against Booty, incomplete, and it stops the clock. They just want to spread that defense out a little bit. They're getting too tight right there, and he just wants to open it up a little bit. So even if it's an incomplete pass, they wanted that defense to become aware of. They do have weapons, and they can open it up once again and score, which would salt this game away, or could salt this game away at least. But it does stop the clock with 125. St. James does not have to burn a timeout. Second and 10 for Evangel. And Dees so, just drops back, feels some pressure. He's going to take a hit here in the pocket, but he throws down to Booty, just a little too tall for Booty. Good coverage applied by Melvin Barnes. 
East beneath center. Hands it off to Brooks. Nowhere to go inside the 50. Down to the 49. And I'd imagine St. James calls a timeout, and they do. 120 remaining in the game. 28-27. Evangel on top of St. James. We'll take a timeout as two, as well as the fourth quarter's winding down here in this AAA state final. Welcome back. Where it's come down to a will of the defense here. St. James with one timeout left. Trailing by one. 120 remaining on the clock. And the ball resting at the Wildcat 49. Evangel facing a third down and seven. This is basically it right here, Renee. You stop them here, you get the ball back, does St. James? Yes, yes. This is a big play right here. Third down and seven. Uh, and, the, and the Wildcats, uh, the, the clock is there is their enemy right now with just you know 80 ticks to go in the game the state title game here they get it back and move down a field quickly they they can make some some noise here before the game is over and uh anything now any points on the scoreboard they can put right now will be a will be a victory be a victory for the wildcats well decent is familiar shotgun he's standing back at his own 43 yard line they have run once out of this formation. This time they'll pass. Dees retreats to his 38, tosses the ball, complete the booty. First down at the 40, inside the 35, down to the 32. Flag goes flying in, and that could ice the ball game. That flag was thrown from as much distance as Dees has passed. That was about an 80 yard uh, flag coming from the sidelines. So the official on the sideline spotted something that uh, warranted a flag. Wow, so that's going to come back right here. Well, that could negate the first down. Let's see. That would be huge. Penalty also stopping the clock at 111 as they sort through this. I mean, you can't say enough about D's and Booty, the combination. Well, money, the money on the line, they have to hook up, and they do. And, and, you, and you know what? That, that clip was, was probably, the blocking below the knees was probably not necessary. He had picked up the first down already. Yes, in fact, but uh, you know, a little enthusiasm can make you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do, and perhaps just one of his teammates trying to help out with the run and, and hit just a clip. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist against the offense, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, and we repeat third down. Wow, that's a killer. Well, Evangel will just have to back it up and convert it again if they want to forget about that penalty. It's third and 10 now. Evangel will have the ball at their own 48-yard line. Evangel will take the timeout, and so will trying to stop Evangel. Evangel taking over the ball. That was some. At their own 20, and they've moved up to their own 48-yard line. It's now third and 10 with a minute 11 left in this ball game, and they're sporting that one-point advantage. And that's a pressure situation for both teams. Of course, Rick Gailey must get the ball back to score or create some type of turnover. And Coach Dunn must just run out that clock, and he's got himself a state title in AAA for 1996. So big play here. You can bet they're going back to the pass, and, which is, puts a little pressure on the front four of the Wildcats and, of course, those defensive backs. And watch the matchup with Lewis and, uh, and uh, Booty as well, the defensive back. That's Booty in motion. Coming towards you. Dees drops back, airs the ball out, looking for Booty. Incomplete. Incomplete. Fourth down. Martin Harry was there. For St. James as he was applying pressure on Dees. And Chad Parker credit him with a great defensive average, stuck his hand up there. Watch, they were looking at Lewis and, and Booty both on the right side. Dees dials Booty's number. Lewis breaks away right there, but it's just, just over the outstretched hands and uh, just, I guess, uh, some distraction. Booty just couldn't hit it. A good hit right there as Martin Harry just laid the lumber on Dees. Fourth and ten, Evangel's faked one punt. I'm sure they'd surprise everyone in the house here if they faked another. The Lava will turn it over to their defense as Cobb stands back at his own 33. Snap is back. Ball is kicked away. Nice kick. A Keller will call for a fair catch right at the 19 and will execute it. So here's the deal after the 32-yard punt. 101 remaining. St. James trails by a point, has one timeout, and needs to move, we think, 81 yards for a score. 
because they have missed a field goal and have also missed an extra point and hesitated to kick an extra point to tie the game. Well, it's 61 ticks, and we're going to have a new state champion one way or the other because the old state champion is not here. And as no one sitting in their seat, you can believe that. Everyone is standing up, anticipating a great finish for a great game. Lovett tosses the ball out to Keller, and he'll get up to the 26-yard line. Not enough for a first down, so the clock will continue to spin inside a minute as the St. James offense will hurry up. Lovett trying to get his team quickly back on the line as they call the plays. Lovett beneath center. Yeah, they've wasted a good 20 seconds here. Lovett drops back to his own 20, tosses the ball to Charles. He'll turn it up the field. He'll be dropped short of the first down. They're going to have to take a timeout. Yes. They're going to have to take a timeout. And with 25 seconds remaining in the contest, St. James will burn a timeout. And when they come back, they'll have no timeouts and they'll face a third and one. They have to go 71 yards. In 25 seconds. So well, they'll, they'll, they'll have to dial D for deep. Well, a couple of long pass plays. You can look for a, a long pass to Napoleon or perhaps a medium range pass to Keller somewhere in the mix in the next two or three plays. Uh, running is just not going to get it there. A run may surprise them, but it won't get sufficient yards. You may get 15, 18 yards on a run, but they need to chew up a lot more real estate in each, you know, three plays you're going to have right here. You got to get 20, 20, you got to get 35 yards in one of these plays somewhere. And they got to use the sidelines as well. Now, yes. without timeouts, they've got to get out of bounds, does St. James, after a completion or after a run. They've got to find that. It's more important to hit the sidelines than to chew up an extra five or 10 yards. So, like I said, you, you could either expect a uh, dial long distance in the pole, you know, or perhaps a medium range to Keller and just uh, throw caution to the wind and hope something happens with that. Well, Napoleon's been your go-to guy as far as receptions have gone from Levette. St. James trying to avoid a second disappointment here. Two years ago, coming at the hands of a meet. A seven-point loss. Levette rolls, looks, throws, incomplete. Looking for Napoleon. He would have had a first down if he had received it, and now it's fourth and one for St. James. 21 seconds remaining. Well, Levette's going to have to do something, either throw or there's nothing there. He's going to have to take off on foot and get that first down and stop the clock. But before the next play starts, unless something crazy happens, he's going to be probably close to 10 seconds. This next play is going to take, you know, 8 to 10 seconds, regardless of what happens. Evangel clean to a one-point lead. Here we go. Fourth down in a yard. Lovett options it out. Charles sweeping near side. He's got a lot of room, and he'll make it out of bounds. And a flag to boot. That could be a face mask, Renee. That'll tack 15 yards onto it if it is a face mask. The clock is, clock is stopped with 14 yards. And look who's in on defense. Abram Booty on that play. Could have been the one to come up and make the face mask infraction. Well, I remember when Evangel was here a few years ago when the game was winding down, Josh Booty was in at safety, so. And intercepted a ball yes. to bring Evangel their first seal, Evangel's first state championship. We got a personal foul, face mask, the defense, the penalty's offset, and we replay fourth down. Oh. Illegal block below the waist on St. James and a face mask call against Evangel. They offset, so it'll be fourth down again. And more importantly, St. James has lost time on the clock. Now they have 14 seconds. Yes. But to finish that thought, Josh Booty intercepting a West St. John pass to seal Evangel's first state championship win. That win coming back in 1993. And his brother now, Abram, playing in the secondary to try to steal this win. And he's still back there along with Robert Davis. Boy, two of the better athletes back there. Abram Booty and Robert Davis both going to be in the, in the Division I players in college next year and look to have a lot of potential for an outstanding career wherever they go. Well, St. James could have had the ball potentially at the Evangel 35. Instead, they've got to convert a fourth down. Levette will throw the ball and almost complete, but incomplete to Keller down the field. And they'll run out of downs 
with 10 seconds remaining, another heartbreaking loss seems to be in store for St. James. 28-27, couldn't have been much closer than that, and, and Evangel is going to come away with a state title, but a much, they really earned this, and, and it was, didn't come easy. St. James came here to play, and the number one and number two teams couldn't get much closer than this, a one-point victory for the Eagles. St. James so close after a program so far down for so many years before Rick Galley brought it back up and brought it to what he affectionately refers to as program status, which in my opinion the Wildcats have reached. And also Evangel has reached in just about the same time frame as St. James. It's Evangel hustling a few personnel on the field, but it's irrelevant as these will drop a knee. St. James cannot stop the clock, and that's it. That's your final count. Number one beats number two. And you said it, Renee, the slimmest of margins. 28-27. The state championship will go to Shreveport for the first time to Evangel in a triple-A venue. Dennis Dunn coaching for four years here at Evangel, picking up three state championship games. And you've got to feel for Rick Gailey. He wasn't shy to make the calls down the stretch. Going forward on fourth down, not getting it there, but his defense blocking a field goal. Going forward on fourth down again, converting. And then on the touchdown, deciding to go for two instead of one. And that was the one-point difference in this game. Instead of a tie ball game, a one-point deficit as he felt his chances better of getting a two-point conversion rather than a one-point conversion. 28-27, your final count. Well, Renee, this one was just about everything we cranked it up to be before the game, everything we expected, and everything we talked about at halftime as well as this game really came down. You said it, the team that had the ball last would win. Evangel had it last for one play, and they were the winners of the game. Well, they were, and, and I'll tell you what, uh, there was really no losers in this game. Uh, Evangel came out of the high end of the scoreboard, but St. James, an outstanding effort, just came one point short. But this, this could be a game of two more evenly matched teams, number one and number two. Exciting game to watch, and I'll tell you, it was one of the best high school games I've seen in quite a while. And you've got to be impressed with the resiliency of both squads as they continue to come back, facing adversity in second half. One team would do something large, the other team would do something large, both coming back, both answering the bell, both picking up touchdowns where they needed them, and it just came right down to the end. Yeah, and Philip Dees put quite a show and showed why he's so highly recruited. We'll be going to North Carolina. What a, a host of stars on both teams. It was a pleasure to watch him, and a lot of these guys, as we said, will be playing in college, and some will be playing on Sunday afternoon in the future. Well, the AAA state championship will reside with Evangel. They will move to 15-0, an undefeated season. St. James, one disappointing loss here by one point in the Superdome, 28-27. They finished their season at 14-1, and, and the state runner-up for the second time under Coach Rick Gailey's tenure. Evangel winning its third state championship under Coach Dennis Dunn, its first state championship in AAA. They have won two state championships over West St. John in single A, but only one in AAA. And tonight, I'm sure Dennis Dunn will rest easy. Final count, 28-27 here from the Superdome as the trophy presentation is getting set to take place down on the field. And we'll take you there and enjoy the pageantry of the Evangel victory and the St. James near miss 28 27 the final count eagles over the wildcats the louisiana high school athletic association would like to thank state farm insurance and its louisiana agents for sponsoring all lhsaa state championship trophies and awards now at midfield representing state farm the following state farm agents State Farm Agent John Michelli of Bashery, Grant Gravois of Thibodeau, and Frank Alexander of Laplace. Also, 
Larry Poole, Bossier City. State Farm Agent Tag Rome, Bossier City. Also at center field, Mr. John Sarton, Principal of Caldwell High School and AAA representative on the LHSA Executive Committee. And Mr. Gary Anderson, past president of the LHSA Executive Committee and principal of Westlake High School. The first award presented by State Farm Agent John Michelli of Vashri, individual awards by Frank Alexander of La Paz, the 1996 Class 3A State Runner-Up Trophy goes to St. James High School. Head coach Rick Gailey, principal Doris Jacob. St. James High School, as selected by the working media, presented by State Farm Agent Grant Gravois of Thibodeau, goes to number 37, Alex Keller. The next award is the Biden Game Ball, presented by Mr. Gary Anderson, principal of Westlake High School, past president of the LHSA, to Evangel head coach Dennis Dunn. The next award, the State Farm 1996 Outstanding Player for Evangel High School, as selected by the working media, presented by State Farm Agent Tag Rome of Bossier City, goes to number 14, Philip P. Final award presented by State Farm Agent Larry Poole of Bossier City, the 1996 Class 3A State Championship Trophy goes to Evangel High School. Head coach Dennis Dunn, principal Dennis Dunn. Let's have a big round of applause for an outstanding AAA state championship game. state champions, the Evangel Eagles, 28-27. I tell you, the AAA state championship game has been a doozy the last few years. Cecilia, 12-9 over Carr last year. Amit, 38-21 over St. James back in 94. Carr, 13-10 in overtime over Cecilia in 93. Jennings, 14-7 in 92. It's, they've all been close, these AAA games. None closer than this one-point victory by Evangel over St. James. Looking at your final stats, Passing-wise for Evangel, 23 of 37 for Deese, 345 yards. Lavette finishing with 154 through the air. Rushing, Evangel 162, the wing tee offense of St. James grinding out 295. Total yardage, 507 for Evangel, 449 for St. James. 24 first downs for Evangel, 22 for St. James. Two turnovers for St. James, none for Evangel. 
possession, just about as close as you can get. 24-08 for Evangel, 23-52 for St. James. Some of the individual numbers as we look, your leading rusher for Evangel, Brooks, 12 carries, 60 yards. Keller led St. James, 11 carries, 143 yards. Your leading receiver for Evangel, Booty, nine catches, 183 yards. And for St. James, it was Napoleon, seven catches for 104 yards. So your final count, Evangel 28, St. James 27.